everyone and welcome back. I'm Gloria Kevlicute and welcome to day one of the ICSA College Sailing Open Fleet Race Nationals Finals. So I'm joined today with Charlotte Rose. Charlotte, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi guys, my name is Charlotte Rose. Um, I went to Jacksonville University and I just graduated last May. Um, I sail the Ilka 6 or as some people may still call it the laser radial. Um, I did college sailing for four years and um, now I am full-time Olympic campaigning in the laser radial. So yeah, I'm happy to be here. Incredible, we're really happy to have you. So uh, as you all know, uh, welcome to the Zim pre-race show. So something that we just want to quickly uh, speak about, uh, some of you may know that uh, essentially the team race standings from the team race nationals have currently been showing to have changed. And so right now we actually see that um, Harvard had retired from a race. Uh, here you can see it on your screens, folks. Uh, this is the Brown Harvard race. And what had happened was, as you'll see here, following mark three that as the harvard team converted to a play one here and you'll see them rounding mark three momentarily um, they ended up rounding mark four and a one two which you'll see shortly and there was just some sort of discrepancy in this race so uh, you'll see here as the second harvard boat was rounding it seems that uh, they had hit the mark, Mark 4, as you can see there. Uh, and you can even see the crew motioning uh, that they for a spin here right after. And uh, es essentially, uh, from what it looks like, they had never done their 360. Um, as sportsmen, they had retired from this race. Uh, as of right now, just looking at the results, uh, as they're shown on tech score, uh, it just looks like... Uh, this means that the Brown University Bears, since there was no final four sailed, uh, if they did take the win for that race, their record is 15 and seven, which puts the Brown Bears into third, um, and then Yale and fourth, and so on. But nothing is final just yet. There could be some appeals that we may be seeing, and we just wanna give you an update as to what we've seen so far. Let's go ahead and take a look now from yesterday. As you know, it was the semifinals, the final day of it. So only the top nine teams of the Western and Eastern semifinals had moved on. And we just want to take a quick look at this race as well. This was the finish line for race 13A of the Western semifinal division. And as you can see, and you just wait for it because right after 17 and one finish, there is a huge line of boats that just come in together here, um, which which tells us that, you know, this was a hard, hard race to cover. But as you can see in your footage here, the PRO, Kyle Assad, did an absolutely excellent job of being able to call all these boats um, at the finish line. You can see there was even a slight pile up at the pin. Um, but like I said, PRO and race committee did an excellent job of covering that final race. Um, I believe this was a race that did change a lot of the final standings. And as you saw after yesterday, uh, the semifinals, some points were, or some teams were just a point away from making it onto the finals today. Yeah, it's quite close racing I saw back at home. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, and so today we're kind of just in a little bit of a holding pattern on the water as we're just waiting for the breeze to fill in for day one of the finals. Uh, but I would like to play a nice clip. I got to interview the lovely superintendent of the U.S. Marine Merchant Academy. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at that. I'm joined here with the superintendent of the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy, uh, Joanna Noonan. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you, Gloria. My name is Vice Admiral Joanna Noonan. I'm the superintendent, otherwise uh, known as a president of the United States Merchant Marine Academy. We are one of the federal service academies. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of uh, the Naval Academy, West Point, Air Force Academy, Coast Guard Academy. We are a federal service academy here in Kings Point, Long Island. Uh, in four years, we graduate officers that serve on active duty 
in any of the services, but most of them get commissioned in the Navy Reserve and sail on commercial ships. Our primary mission is to graduate merchant mariners, uh, mariners that support national security and economic security. Uh, you cannot win any wars without the folks that are bringing the men and women to the fight and the material that they need. From what I hear, you are a Coast Guard Academy graduate, so when you're coming to these events, you've got Coast Guard here and the Kings Point team, so who are you kind of, uh, what's, what's up with the rivalry? Who are you rooting for? When I first came to Kings Point, I retired from the Coast Guard last summer, and I came to Kings Point. It is a very big rivalry. So people here at Kings Point could not believe it. You mean you're willing to be in our uniform and say beat Coast Guard? I don't know why it was so easy to say <laughs> beat Coast Guard. But today, I will say, since our team is not in the final event, I'm going to go for the Coast Guard. There How's that? Go. I like it. Yeah, so what a pleasure it was to speak with the superintendent. She has been incredible, and, you know, the, the school has put together such a beautiful event. Um, and actually, the alumni uh, that I had the pleasure of having as my co-commentator the past two days, the alumni Charlie Lomax from the U.S. Marine Merchant Academy, he left me this note. And uh, apparently he stayed late last night and uh, recorded an interview with his old high school teacher and coach, um, our PRO, Kyle Assad. So um, he said it's called Between Two Flags. <laughs> Welcome to the first edition of Between Two Flags. I'm your host, Charlie Lomax. I'm joined today by Kyle, PRO, Kyle Assad. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Charles. What's your favorite Starbucks? Uh, well, I'd have to tell you that my favorite Starbucks is the iStart box. Follow up, what's your favorite start sequence? Oh, well, absolutely the rolling three minute start. I think the warning is baked into the starting sequence and it's just a really great way to get races started and going. I think it's Given the, legends yeah. like Sandy Grosvenor, Dave Perry, Dave Dillon Ball, Peter Reggio, Chip Till, and other amazing PROs, how do you feel being well below their average at running fair races? Do you think the missing Con College boat might be behind your mustache? You didn't get off a Final Four. Do you think it was your poor time management, or did you just stop caring? I would say that this interview reminds me of your academic career. You're trying really, really hard, and the results are just mediocre. Really bad. Really bad. Are you comfortable running races for adults? Or do you think that, you know, little children is just more your wheelhouse? Charlie, you know, I prefer to run races for people that are passionate about sailing. And as someone who peaked in high school, I feel like you could appreciate that. The forecast doesn't look good for Thursday and Friday of finals. Do you have a plan if you can't get off of nationals? Charlie, do you have a plan? How are you going to look your daughter in the face and tell her that you crushed the hopes and dreams of hundreds of college sailors and their chance for a title? The same way I crushed your dreams as both your teacher and coach, Charlie. Easily. What are some regattas that have been run well? And explain how you think that you could do more to live up to those standards. Chris. Chris. This is bombing worse than Sail Group in 2011. Thanks for being here. That's all the time we have. Um, it, you can see yourself now. Wow. Well, uh, that was something else. That was something else for sure. Um, well, uh, after that, uh, I got to say, uh, Breeze still has not changed. So uh, we uh, just looking around and it's still uh, looking a little bit glossy, glassy, glossy, both um, out on the water. So folks, 
hold on to your chairs, hold on to your horses. Uh, Charlotte and I will be back the moment those boats are leaving the dock and uh, getting started. So stay tuned. Zim and West Coast Sailing are proud to support ICSA with the College Sailing Give Back Program. When college programs make purchases through their Zim and West Coast Sailing Team accounts, they not only get great equipment, great service, and great discounts, but also 5% of their purchase is donated back to ICSA. With the Zim and West Coast Sailing College Give Back Program, your general fleet maintenance and sale purchases help with general maintenance of ICSA and provides direct support to the organization that makes it all happen and increases access to the water for all. Welcome back, folks. Uh, as you see in your view, the boats are out. They're ready to sail. Um, and the breeze, we've got some, uh, we've got a bit of breeze here coming out of the north. Um, but I'll be honest, beyond that little breeze line, looks like we've just got straight glass. So, um, as P any PRO would do, Kyle's got all the boats out there, and we'll see how many races we can get off. As you know, in order to actually have a national championship, uh, what you need to do is you need to have at least three races in each division. Now, looking at the forecast that we have for the next few days, or the next today and tomorrow, we're not seeing much breeze on the forecast tomorrow. Now, that being said, just like sailing always does this, um, you can't always trust the forecast. So, of course, everybody wants to sail national championship. We're very hopeful. So let's go ahead and take a look at this starting sequence. This is race 1A of day one of the open finals. Let's go ahead and pull up some of the rotations here um, on my end, of course. Um, so it looks like in boat one, that's BC, a little bit more of the boat. And as you can see, these are really tight. Boat three is over in this race. And in boat three, we have brown bears. Three apparently has already cleared themselves. So this is, we have the very first race of the Open Fleet Race National Championship underway. Charlotte, what are you seeing out there? Yeah, so it, it looks like nine, who are the St. Mary's uh, Seahawks, look like uh, they had a pretty clean start at the boat, tacked right off, and they, you know, they're Taking that looks like a lefty out to the right. Um, yeah, they look, they're looking fast and yeah. Yeah, so um, just a reminder as well for those of you that are watching, um, this, the KP sales, as you can see on in your view right now, that is the 420s and the Zim sales, that is the FJs. So A Division has started the day out in 420s and the interesting thing about that is, is it, or they will continue in the 420s as well. So t uh, today, A division is in 420s. Tomorrow, A division is in FJs and flip-flop. Uh, so something to note of that is a lot of these teams, I'm curious if they've taken this into account. Perhaps not. They're like A division is A division and so on. But as we talked about in prior days, some, some teams have stronger players in FJs and stronger players in 420s. So... You know, there's a little bit of strategy of going into today of who are you going to start knowing that there might not be any sailing tomorrow. What do you think of that, Charlotte? Yeah, it's definitely, definitely feels like a lot of pressure in for today, but I feel like, you know, KP is going to try their best getting as many races as they can today. And, you know, if I was out there sailing today, I'd just be focusing on um, where the pressure is, what I can control and... Um, you know, doing the best that I can. Yeah, couldn't have said it better myself. So, you know, leading out to the right side, uh, kind of high and inside right now, that is boat nine, St. Mary's Seahawks, uh, my alma mater. And then when boat 15, we have U Miami, uh, who has really, my fun fact about U Miami, this is their second time ever in history qualifying for the national, the finals in their program history, only the second time. The last time they had qualified for the finals was in 2011. 
So incredibly um, well done by U Miami. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of respect for U Miami, especially since, you know, they've they've kind of been an up and coming team the past, you know, four years and they've got a pretty pretty nice roster um, that's come up in recent years and uh, couldn't be happier for, you know, my CESA um, yeah, CESA competitors, you know, back when I was at JU. One hundred percent. Um, kind of going back now. Now take a look at those boats up top left. Uh, it looks like these guys on the left might be crossing the boats outright. And yeah, you're starting to see that boat 10, that Stanford University Cardinal. They are crossing St. Mary's uh, boat nine, which if you, if you recall it just a hot second ago, boat nine was actually looking like they were leading this race out on the right hand side. So uh, but we see Boat 7 coming in and crossing the entire fleet on port right now. Boat 7, that is going to be the Harvard Crimson. And I'll tell you what, that's definitely a team we want to keep our eyes on because they have been doing a stellar job across the um, Team Race National Championship and even in the semifinals, they were doing such an excellent job. They're extremely fast and, you know, obviously a very talented squad over there. So... Uh, I'll, we'll definitely want to keep an eye on them throughout these races. Yeah, and then here comes boat number eight. They're now rounding the top mark. Boat 18, the Yale uh, Yale Bulldogs um, rounding. And then everyone else is rounding behind. Can't really see the numbers. Um, boat 16, if I'm not wrong, Penn. Uh, boat number 10 and 4th, who are... Um, Stanford Cardinals looks a bit like it's getting getting pretty light out there. Boats are staying on two sail. Um, well, that's an interesting way to say it on two sail. Yeah, that's what we call it. Oh wow, I'd never heard that before. That's a nice way to say it. I like that. Yeah, so you know some of the teams we're kind of going to want to be watching who are doing really well in the semifinals. And just so you know, I just heard we had a general recall for the race 1B. So we're going to keep our eyes on this race 1A, which I, honestly, I mean, this looks brutally light. Look at boat 2. I mean, their batten is inverted on this downwind. That is really, really tough. But yeah. also tactically, uh, it's always maybe, you know, not the best decision in a bigger fleet like this where you have 18 boats to be jibing immediately around that offset just because then you're getting covered by the entire fleet and we just saw that happen for for boat two. Oh man a close up there that's boat two Bowden um gaining speed coming back on this jibe but even then it looks like their batten may be still a little bit inverted which is just a telltale sign of how light it is out there right now yeah you can see boat number nine tried to go wing on wing and just Sales were not filling, oh. so they gotta go back onto two sail. What do, what do they call it? Just uh, just going on a reach. Oh, yeah, reach. just reaching. Yeah, so um, just just a testament of how light it is. Boat seven leading this race right now. That is Harvard holding on to that lead. Well done to them. Boat eighteen, that is Yale. <sighs> Pardon me, I had to sneeze, folks. Didn't want you to hear that. And 16, we have the Penn Quakers in boat 10. We have Stanford in fourth right now, in 12th, and just about fifth, that's boat 12. Tulane, who, by the way, really, really fought their way to make it to the finals. And um, I think we're going to see a really strong showing from them in the finals. I, I, I have a strong feeling about that. They've got to defend that national championship title, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so we're seeing nine kind of, nine's kind of sending it over to the other side here. Ten, bold move in this light stuff, just going to a wing. But honestly, it looks like it's paying. It looks like everybody might yeah. just be getting into some kind of pressure here. Yeah, it looks like leaders are turning down. Oh. What a great match jive there yeah, from both nice seven. Wow, drive. that is picturesque. Well done by them. <laughs> But you can see, I mean, even the skippers are sitting into the boats. This looks like one of those drag races to the finish here, which is, I, personally, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be sailing right now. That's, that's, it can be, especially with how hot it is. I mean, right now, 
It is 82 degrees, folks. So, you know, all the teams are working really hard to stay hydrated and uh, keep their players from getting frustrated in the heat meter, uh, which I still need to make my XY graph of heat and uh, frustration, how uh, that's directly correlated. So I, I definitely feel that. <laughs> yeah. So you 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 sailed uh, down south, Charlotte. So it's always pretty hot down there. So what is your key to not getting hot and bothered in the light air hot days? Yeah. Um, I can't. Yeah. Just you know, trying to stay you know hydrated. Um, drink water. Drink electrolytes. Um, also trying to eat some food. Um, I will attest that. The hotter it gets, the more frustrated I get. Yeah. Um, right. Still today, but um, you know, in Florida it was super hot, super humid most Oof. most of the year round, and um, just trying to eat, trying to stay hydrated. Um, oh, yeah. Sometimes if we were, if we had a break, we'd jump in the water, get cooled off. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty brutal out there right now. I, yeah. I'd be sweating. Oh yeah, and so you're seeing here. This is uh, the one thing that I is, that is my favorite about like the super light air downwinds, is you'll see boats just nonstop jibing, like nonstop. You're looking, you know, in your view, you've got a jibing battle between 14.5 and 13, then 10 and six, and you'll see nine get into the mix and boat 12, and it's so it can be so tough here. I mean, even these tacks, they are like slow-mo in, in this light air. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just trying to jibe and get, either get the inside, try to get clear air as much as you can. And also, like, doing these jibes and tacks just produces a little bit more speed in this really light stuff as well. So if you can have a good tack, nice roll tack in these, in these 420s, you know, in the 420s, you have to kind of take a little bit more of your time rolling the boat if you can get a good tack you can get a lot of speed out of all of them so oh yeah yeah so uh, there's there are umpires on out on the water as well yeah. for the it, finals so i'm almost positive that i saw a boat spinning in the back potentially yeah, it looks like boat 12 um i'm not sure if they rounded the mark or not no they're still going downwind um it looked like they were doing a 720. that is tough definitely don't want to do a 720 in this so, and we're just still waiting on the B division race to get started, but it is getting increasingly lighter and lighter. I am starting to see a little bit more breeze in the in the distance, but folks, here's what our forecast is telling us. Our forecast is showing that there's supposed to be a southerly that fills in later today. So um, we might see something a little bit similar to what we saw during the women's semifinals, which was where we had a very slight and dying breeze from the north, yeah. and then we were holding on to it for dear life, as we would want to, and what happened was is the southerly would fill, it would clash in the middle, and then it would take a little bit of time for the breeze to just, the southerly to fully take over. And so... We're gonna go ahead and blow this race off. So I... 420s, please come back. All right, so... please come back. I just heard word from the PRO, they said that they're blowing that race off and they're calling the 420s back. back to the starting line and presumably the PRO Kyle Assad is going to be waiting for a little bit more breeze, which is totally fair. It looks like the breeze is Come kind of switching shifted. over. It yeah. totally just did exactly what I was saying. Wow. Yeah, it's, shifted. it's shifted to like to the right. Total 180-ish, yeah. kind of. Kind of. It's Almost. Gonna, yeah. It looks like it's it's starting to want to. So there, w what we can wait for is, well, we're gonna have to hold for a bit just because we're still waiting for that southerly though. As you can see folks, um, two was subtract about 30 degrees from two's direction right now. That's where the wind was before. This is a massive wind change. Uh, the, the wind is now essentially coming off of the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy, off of the campus, which is a breeze direction that we have not yet seen once. So this is definitely a big telltale sign of perhaps a southerly is filling in soon. And I'm looking over to my left, which is where south is, and I'm starting to see a distant, distant breeze line. 
So I think with tomorrow's forecast, the goal without a doubt is get at least three races for each division today. Keep in mind, there is no cutoff time today. So that means, you know, just hammer out as many as we can today because tomorrow we have a cutoff time of five. And uh, it consistently, because, you know, the production team's been staying on after hours. Uh, we, we, we leave here pretty late. So we, what we've been seeing every single day is essentially this beautiful southerly fills in at just around 5 o'clock every single day. So my money's on that even if this breeze dies, which we've seen at quite a few of the days leading up to the, today, um, we'll definitely see some breeze at 5. And I don't think anybody's going home until at least three races in each division are done. Oh. Yeah, it's gonna be a long one. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, it's gonna be a long day for sure, folks. So you know, yeah. let's uh, let's hope it switches over quickly. It seems like I can feel breeze now coming from the south, and if you look out on the water, all the boats are kind of shifting, facing south. Yeah. So hopefully the race committee is pretty pretty quick about picking up marks and switching over to the other side. Totally agree. And uh, in the meantime, folks, just hang on and. We'll uh, come back to you as soon as that first race is underway. Cheers. Sorry for making you wait. I know you want to hear me talk. I'm just kidding. Um, so um, here we are. The breeze has completely done a 180 flip flop, just like I kind of was predicting. Not saying I'm a wizard or anything, but um, as you saw in the forecast, I think what we're going to see here is uh, we're going to be out here for a very, very long time today. What do you think, Charlotte? Yeah, it's, it looks like it's, you know, filled in a lot better than, you know, earlier coming from the north. Um, that first race that was indeed in abandoned. Um, I will say, Gloria, wasn't it a couple of days ago that you uh, <laughs> you forecasted something or you, you were? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know what? I think I did. Um, or maybe it was Charlie. It was somebody. But uh, we were pretty on point, so not saying that uh, meteorology may be my next career, but uh, <laughs> perhaps it should be. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Once again, um, sail flow is just my best friend, quite honestly. So. Yeah, but it looks like it's gonna be it, it's gonna be a long day. It's uh, currently 4:22. I think the race committee is just gonna try to bang off as many races as they, as they can today, and with the breeze right now and. Um, I heard a couple days ago that they kept everyone out and basically till sunset. So um, I think everyone should be prepared for that. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, as you see here, we have a minute and 10 seconds left until the start of race 1A of the Open Fleet Race Finals. Um, that's one minute gun. Charlotte, you got one minute to the starting sequence. You have this beautiful southerly. What are you doing to prepare for the start? All right, update is, is that the hook was loose on the race committee boat. So they're going to restart this start. Um, really, you know, all the respect to uh, Piero, Kyle. He keeps it real out there. Yeah. yeah. Neat thing is, is all the uh, a coach from each team is able to be out on the water today. So you can kind of see out there, there's those, um, now I always forget what they're called, those rotation boats. The, the they're fancy boats. Yeah, the, fa oh, the fancy, what, yeah. yeah, I forgot what they're called. What are they? The ones that they bring you to your boat. When I remember it, I'll say it. But basically there's about three of those out there filled to the brims with uh, lovely college sailing coaches that are eager to uh, get their teams to win this national championship. 
So uh, I figure, why don't we take a look? Uh, I'm just gonna, let's talk about some teams that I think we uh, are in the stand, you know, in the run for uh, this national championship. Uh, just, just thinking back, you know, the top five teams from, from the Western semifinals were Georgetown, Harvard, Dartmouth, Stanford, and Bowdoin. And from the Eastern semifinals, our top five boats were Yale, St. Mary's, College of Maryland, Brown, Tufts, and Navy. Who who are you kind of looking for? Is, do you, is there anybody you think, Charlotte, that I didn't name off that made it in the top nine, but you think is gonna kind of claw and fight their way for the win? Uh, in, this, in the finals. I feel like it's, you know, I feel like it's anyone's game, you know, um, uh, watching the past, uh, you know, team racing and the, the women's uh, semifinals and finals, you know, um, it looks to seem that this, this venue is a pretty tough venue to sail with the current and, you know, the wind and, um, you know, having late, late starts today. And I, I feel like, you know, any, it's any, any sailor's game, and whoever has their head on a swivel and you know um, you know keeps it calm, keeps it cool and collected, uh, can can come out on top. Um, yeah, I feel like all the teams from Eastern and Western are pretty strong teams. Um, they, you know, in the results, they've all showed they can they can be in the front and be in the top. And you know, it's let's see how it goes. Yeah, I uh, I'm right there with you. Yeah, so just taking you know taking a little gander over at some of these teams. Um, you know, Harvard has been doing an excellent job at these national championships. I'm just taking a look. Uh, their captains of the team are Sarah, Bur Sarah Byrne and Lachlan McGranahan. And here you see those were the top standings from, from the semifinals, Harvard with 181 points right behind Georgetown with 179. Then we had Dartmouth in third with 184 points. Stanford tied with Bowdoin with 193. U.S. Coast Guard with 199. URI with 204. Fordham with 211. And Boston College with 212. And we saw that College Charleston didn't make the cut by just one point. That's pretty brutal, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's always really, really difficult. Um, it's sad to see that team go. I mean, they really were had a very strong first day of the semifinals, and then, you know, it, it all comes down to that one thing. Um, and uh, unfortunately, in those final races, they just didn't put in a big enough gap between BC. Taking a look at the other semifinals, uh, we have Yale University in first with 125 points. St. Mary's College of Maryland with 156 points. Uh, Brown Bears in third with 164 points. Tufts in fourth with 167 points. Navy with in fifth with 199 points. UPenn uh, University of Pennsylvania uh, with 204 points. MIT in seventh with 211 points. U Miami with 224 points in eighth place. And in ninth, clinching that top nine, Tulane University Green Wave with 244 points. So that must, be, that, that must feel really good to, you know, claw your way all the way back to ninth. You know, I think I saw yesterday Tulane was struggling just a bit, yeah. um, not almost not making the cut. And, you know, that those last couple races really mean a lot. And, you know, they did it. They went out there and just... Oh, they gave it their they, all. Yeah, they so gave it their all. It, they they really had a, a, a pretty good last set there. And it's funny, I was just talking to um, uh, their B division skipper for that day. It was Ciara. And she was just telling me, she's like, you know, you guys hit it right on the dot with the with the conversation between A division and B division of, hey, I just put in a two-point gap. Best of luck. And she was like, you know, that's exactly how it went. You know, Cameron Giblin. Rotated out. He's like two points. Best of luck. Fist bump. Uh oh. Uh oh. It happens. I'm terrible at catching marks. So, um, but you know, talking about that Harvard team. So, their captains are Sarah Byrne and Lachlan McGranahan. Then they have outstanding, lovely seniors: um, Eric Hansen, Juliana Ruggieri, Chris Wang. Um, and, you know, just taking a look at some of their, you know, 
some of the rookies. So Nisa Rookie of the Year was actually Justin Callahan. So he's a he's a freshman and he has just been absolutely crushing it at all these events and in Nisa overall. So uh, MVP of their team is Marbella Marlowe. Most valued team most valued teammate, Eric Hansen, unsung hero, Eric Hansen, um, and sportsman Cordelia Byrne. So and then just taking a look, you know, who's somebody from their sailing team that we kind of got to be keeping an eye out for. And uh, that's Justin and Mitchell Callahan. They're a set of twins. And uh, it's funny, their, their little fun fact is that they've had two sets of twins and two sisters on our team in the last year. Do you guys have any siblings over at Jax? No, I don't think so, actually. Yeah, we, um, yeah, we didn't have any overlap. We didn't have any, did we? No, no twins, no overlap over at St. Mary's. So um, it's really interesting to see how many sets of siblings are just dominating the college sailing field, you know? So, and, and, and speaking on that, it's you take a look at the Women's Fleet Race National Championship from this year, and the top three teams were all sets of sisters. So, you know, and, and first at uh, the Women's Open Nationals was the Larkamp sisters, and then in second, uh, the Yale Bulldogs, you had the Cole, Coles twins, and then in third, I believe it was the BC Eagles O'Brien's twins. So... Talk about powerhouse sibling sets, yeah. right? So, and and the biggest kudos to the Callahan brothers who have just showed up their freshman year of college and just been absolutely crushing it. Yeah, it must feel, must feel pretty good to have your, you know, grew up with your sibling and then now, now being on the same team as them, you know, um, I wonder how that, that dynamic work out works out like do they do they live together at college yeah. i wonder and like they spend 24 7 with each other you know right yeah do you have any siblings yeah i have an i have a older sister and i have a older half brother nice. so I'm the, I'm the youngest of three nice yeah i have an older sister i think uh we would not get along very well on a team together yeah <laughs> no yeah, I, yeah I, my sister wasn't very into sailing but Neither was I, mine. I would not have yeah got along with my sister yeah. and we sailed together right uh, so it's a it's really interesting dynamic to see these sisters and and brothers getting along incredibly well and to be on a team together and sailing's competitive it's tough so yeah. it's like kudos to them because I'm, I'm not sure that every single sibling can be like yeah that's piece of cake let, yeah let me let me be on a team with my sibling so that's uh all all the respect to them and the parents as well. Yeah, you know? seriously. Some, not one, but two, I to know. the same to the same college, and college is not cheap. Yeah, yeah, you and know? just and and just to to have not just one, but two or many more talented children. You know, yeah. that's the all the respect. Yeah, so folks, it looks like we've got a minute and 30 seconds here until the start of race 1A of the Open Fleet Race Nationals. This would be the very first race of the event. The, uh, as one may call it, the opener. So we've got this beautiful southerly breeze that's now filled in. I would say it's about, you know, lick my finger, hold it up. I'd give it a solid 8 to 10 knots. Maybe a gust of no, I'd say uh, yeah. Eight, I'm gonna I'm gonna stand by that eight to ten. So hot take here, fourteen port on port, just kind of chilling over here by the pin of the start. That's that's the Navy team. Uh, I'm curious if they're trying to go for a port tack here. That'd be a really bold move for the first race of the Nationals. Yeah, very bold. And. Question is, is he gonna make that? I mean, yeah, no, bail yeah. out of there. Oh, port tack approach. Yeah, a little bit late, but yeah. uh, I like it. It's a little bit bold. Yeah, it seems like a lot of oh, the distribution is towards the pin, so maybe a lot of teams are. Oh, I actually kind of look. Mm. It's, no, it's, it's, it's a pretty tight line. Yeah, pretty tight. So uh, leading over by the pin. That was boat 15. You Miami. There you go. Boat 11 just getting the scoot there. That's uh, boat 11. That's Tufts. So 
looks like U Miami winning the pin of this starting line. It looks like that's a second lane start for 14 from Navy. That's that, that tough thing with that port, uh, late port approach. Um, looks like I can see the Yale Bulldogs right above and first in the first lane. That's definitely the uh, Nisa superstar Jack Egan and Catherine Webb who have just been demolishing it in Nisa and definitely a younger duo as well. So they're not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. So you see Navy is tacking off, but U Miami seems to have pretty good control of the left-hand side here. Um, they've got that boat 16 Penn going out there and boat seven Harvard as well. So I'm seeing a, a decent side of the fleet really going to the right-hand side here. Yeah. And you can kind of see that, you know, a couple more people are kind of holding. Some are tacking them off to port. Uh, UM seems like they're holding on starboard out to the to the left side. Finally coming back over yeah. with the rest of the, with the rest of the fleet. But that looked like it was a tough start for boat 13. It's going to be the Coast Guard Bears. So it looks like uh, pretty consistently as a fleet, they're going pretty far right here. I'll be honest, just looking up the course, this is going to be a really long upwind. Like, that is a significant upwind. Yeah, wow, these, these races are going to be a little bit long in my eyes. Yeah, I'm just taking a look at the the race course right now. And, you know, with this current, these downwinds are going to be pretty fast. So the, right now the current is going from south to north. So basically they're going against, uh, against the current on these upwinds. So, and then the downwinds are going to be super fast, right? They're going with the current. Yeah. But I'm taking a look up right now, and they are about, you know, they are only maybe a quarter of the way up. It's been about three minutes since the start. These are gonna be, this is gonna be a really long race. I would, I would, I imagine that they made it so long because they don't want the downwinds to be incredibly fast. But in my eyes, I think this is just an extremely, extremely long race course. Yeah, aren't, aren't college sailing races supposed to be about 20 tw minutes? 20 minutes, yeah. yeah. And uh, these upwinds are going to be so long because they're going against the current. So it, it's also interesting. I'm seeing a lot of people really sailing closer to the wall here. And by the wall, folks, I mean uh, where all these lovely spectator uh, tents are set up. And this is definitely, I can see us running into some moments today where people are going to be calling for room to tack and so on. Take a look at boat 15 coming off that pin for, at the starting line. They're actually doing a pretty good job balancing the fleet here. They're definitely running the left side, left-hand side of the race course. And uh, quite honestly, they look a little bit more bow up than those boats that are out course right. It looks like there's uh, a little bit better breeze too on the left. Yeah, I mean, I can feel it kind of hit, hit in my face, which is quite nice because it's offsetting the heat. So 15 doing an excellent job. They have boat seven, I believe that is Harvard right on their tail. Boat 16 kind of just control in the middle. That's Penn. I see boat 10 kind of leading out in the right on the right hand side. That's going to be Stanford. Boat I want to be looking for is Yale. That's boat 18, who's kind of in the middle, about to tack onto boat five. That is Fordham. Yeah, you can see that, um, you know, the front row uh, group coming out from the left are now tacking back over on port. Um, they look pretty pretty wound up. Uh, you can see crews are 
hiking out. Skippers are hiking out, so it looks like pretty good breeze uh, right now on the left. Um, we'll see if this uh, this group 15, 7, and 13 are crossing boat uh, boat 16. Yeah. This is gonna be tough. Yeah, it's, it's always difficult with the first race as well, right, Charlotte? Where it's just like, what's what's what works? We don't know yet, right? So the first race is a really easy one where you can kind of get a little bit lucky and be like, hey, uh, this worked for me. That's cool. But then everybody kind of starts to catch up onto it. Or you kind of have a bad race and you're like, okay, so that doesn't work. I should have done this better. And then. Once again, everybody kind of starts catching up if there is even a, the slightest bit of a pattern. Yeah, I definitely feel like first race of the Grana, it's either, you know, the people that do well, you know, they're like, oh, you know, I, I'm on it, got the nice shift, or I feel like some, te some people get, you know, a little nervous on the first race, you know, when shifted, don't, you know, really don't know if it's, um, you know, stable, and you just kind of go out there and figure it out. Yeah, that's so true. Let's take a look here. Boat 8 kind of just pretty far left. That's MIT. And we've got Boat 3 Brown kind of uh, pretty far left as well. Definitely a little bit further behind the rest. 17 URI. They really loved the right-hand side yesterday. Um, but had a pretty strong performance and really fought their way into the top top nine so I think that we got to be keeping an eye out on those guys too yeah so here is the rotations for race 1A now folks keep in mind it's day one it's race one anything can happen at this point so, I mean, unless somebody's putting up a picket fence, but really it's anybody's game. It is so early on to really be like, these people are leading and so on. Right now, we're just, we know one thing is for certain. What wins the national championship is consistency, mental aptitude, and just sailing fast and having fun. You know, so... We've seen who's done well in the past. We know what players are still with us, which ones have left. We can look at the rosters, but at the end of the day, it's really anybody's event. Yeah. Oh, well, we got we got the first uh, boat around the top mark. Uh, you yeah. Miami. Yeah, you Miami. Nice well, job. Well done by them. Really holding down the fort here. Yeah. Uh, followed by boat seven. That's Harvard. 16 tailing behind. That's Pennsylvania Quakers. Yeah, so earlier we were saying that this seemed like a pretty long beat. Um, you know, we could see the timer up in the top right corner. It took about eight minutes right. to, uh, to do the entire first beat. Right. So let's and see how long it takes to, for them to go down with. Yeah, boat five. That was Georgetown. Skipped one, 10, that's Stanford. Six, Fordham. Four, Brown. Two, Bowden. Nine, St. Mary's. 11, oh. 11, that's Tufts. 12, Tulane. 13, Coast Guard. Oh. You or I. So, so with the current pushing downwind, you're going to be seeing people hitting marks. So reason being that it's pushing them. You need to overstand. You'll be seeing a lot of overstanding ley lines because of this current. And at the same time, you'll be seeing people hitting marks pretty frequently. So that current's essentially pushing you down. So if you're on ley line, there's a good chance that the current slides you onto a mark. They don't current doesn't mean to but it happens so definitely on these uh these upwinds where you're sailing against the current i think we'll see the 420s having s significantly better success going up than um 
the FJs will. I think it's going to be a little bit of a slower upwind for these FJs. But, folks, I mean, take a look at this race. These guys are cruising on this downwind. Like, cruising. This current is truly going to make these downwinds super, super short, which is why we have such a long upwind. But I can't help but think these upwinds are still brutally long. But take a look at that. 10 minutes and 30 seconds after the start. They rounded the top mark with about eight minutes, with about eight minutes into the race. And they're already more than, like significantly more than halfway down this, this downwind beat. So take a look, you've got boat 17 there. You arrive. Boat 13 to the left of them. That's Coast Guard Academy. And there you can see they're even overlapping, you know, passing through the uh, FJ Fleet B Division. Boat 8 over to the left. That's MIT. Leading this race still is U Miami, followed by Harvard in boat seven. Boat 18, Yale, what a comeback. They were kind of middle on that upwind. Boat 16 out course right. That's Pennsylvania Quakers. Boat 10, that is Stanford. Boat five, that is Fordham. I think as we watch this this downwind, all these boats come down. I think the you know with the current, the the fleet's gonna compress again. So oh. all the all the guys in the front that were pretty far ahead, and all the people in the back that are catching up, they're gonna compress the race a little bit. Oh yeah, I and think that's. Go ahead, Charlotte. And watching you know the um, B division go by a lot. I think a lot of the sailors seeing that how. Um, how uh, strong the current is. I think people are going to start sailing out towards uh, towards the current line. The well, or the, the wall, the, the wall, wall, the break yep. wall, because um, I think it's a little bit shallower and a little bit out of out of the current. So um, yeah, we'll we'll wait and see. It looks like um, boats are rounding. A lot of the boats are rounding course left um, mark, uh, leeward mark. Um, and holding it out to, to the right, uh, not to the right, to the left. Yeah, the right side, I, we've been seeing the right side work significantly in, uh, in a little bit of that southerly breeze. So Charlie and I were getting into it yesterday. We were like, left is law, right is right. Now, granted, that's not always the case. Do not always do that. You will find yourself oftentimes in trouble by banging corners because I too have banged many a corners, especially as a freshman. But it seemed like yesterday, the right was really, really working. And we saw it work for a lot of teams like you or I. So worth noting, let's go ahead and take a look at some things. Yeah, as you can see on the camera here, you Miami, who's, who's leading the racer going out towards the wall and see how far they go um, a lot of other teams seem like they're they've tacked out heading back towards the right of the race course but um, you Miami and uh, the Harvard Crimson still look look pretty strong on the left yeah there you go looks like there's a little bit more pressure here on the left as well you can kind of see out um, on the race course, uh, on the left, you Miami, I could see the crews are hiking and um, not so much on, on the right, but, you know, we'll see. Yeah, the, it's really tough. It's like, I wish it, some people get so carried away in a race that they don't, they forget to look what's going on ahead. And that's one of the advantages of also being the B division, um, is that as the B division driver, um, if you're starting after a division, it's so key to just take a look up and be like, oh man, look at what worked for them. 
let's maybe think about that. Yeah, that's what I love to do if I'm if I'm second start, you know. Oh yeah. You're like, okay, looks like you know the right looks like it's paying. Then probably there's a shift coming down from the right, and I that's what my plan is, you know. Oh totally. You know, while you Miami is leading this race, um, it's worth worth talking about. They're a, they've got a, their team captain is Atlee Cole. Their outstanding seniors are Marshall McCann, Sandy Helshorn, Dominic. Con Pardon me, Dominic, but uh, I believe your last name may be Canonico. Canonico. Their uh, rookie of the year is Stephen Hardy, MVP skipper Atlee Cole, MVP crew Natalie Elder, sportsman of the year Marshall McCann. And uh, somebody that their team is claiming college sailing should be taking a look at is uh, uh, Atlee Cole. Aiden Dennis, Stephen Hardy, and Natalie El Elder. Um, and, you know, it's worth noting that, like I was saying, it's actually their first, it was their first time to, to team race nationals in 10 years, second time in school history, first time ever winning their conference team race national, or team race championship. And uh, they love to use references from the film Top Gun for team racing. Their team was awarded the University of Miami Club Sport of the Year for both 2016 and 2017 out of more than 50 club sports teams at UMiami. Wow, that's pretty impressive. That is impressive. Their head coach, Bill Johns, won SESA Coach of the Year's honors for the year of the 2022 to 2023 sailing year. Um, U Miami had won the inaugural Zimbergi contest, so apparently... They have the coolest Bergy out there. Or they're really good at convincing people to vote for them. Either way, good good on you. And uh, they say that they sail at probably the best sailing venue in all of college sailing, but hardly ever get to compete there. I don't know. I think, I mean, that's a, that's a hot take because right now KP, in my opinion, is has done, has been one of the best venues I've ever been to. So that's a hot take. It's a hot take. Let us know what you think. Yeah, as you can, as you can see on the camera now, I think they've panned to B division, um, going downwind on there on the first downwind leg, and oh nope, they've panned back to. Yeah, so um, just you know, just to let you in on it, uh, boat 18 Yale Bulldogs is is, is leading the uh, B division race right now by a significant bunch, but let's. Uh, I'm curious. Do you think uh, U Miami is going to hold on a lead here? Because I'm being seeing boat seven from Harvard coming in with a potential cross here on that upwind, and oh, that would yeah. indeed be so. And 15 tacking off, so once again splitting off from boat seven. Yeah, and boat nine coming in from that left-hand side, that's St. Mary's, having a little bit of a tough race. Uh, they were doing much better in the one with the light air, but uh, that was abandoned. Yeah, so let's just take a look. So this race 1A has been just approximately 18 minutes here, coming up on 19. So actually very well timed out, I think. After we see the first boat round the top mark, um, it, it, their downwind pretty much took like two minutes and 30 seconds. That was like very, very impressive. So um, I, it, there's good potential that they do not move this race course. So it looks like. It's gonna be a pretty tight tight rounding here. You can see boat right. four, Dartmouth, Ooh, caught up. Coming um, hot on starboard, too. Yeah. So that was uh, about a 3.45. So it looks like boat seven rounding in first. U Miami boat 15 rounding in second. Very laser sailor esque by you, Miami, there on that mark rounding. What do you think? You're a laser sailor? I'm not. 
I think that was laser sailor esque, that mark rounding, the hiking. Yeah, I think, yeah, you just gotta be aggressive around the marks and, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you really gotta hike super hard when uh, bearing off in a, in a laser. Boat 10 coming in Stanford, tacking on top of that little clump of boats. But there's boat 18, that's Yale, followed by boat 10, Stanford. Boat 11, that is Tufts, who, who made quite a comeback. comeback. I, I thought they had a little bit of a tough, tough start. There we've got boat one as well, Boston College. Great race for them. Boat 17, URI also coming back here. Boat five, that is Fordham also having a great, pretty, pretty good race. Oh, we're seeing a spin from boat 11. That's Tufts. Here we see boat three, that is brown. Boat eight, MIT. Yeah, a little bit of a tough race for brown there for a first one. Another fun fact about you, Miami team is Atlee Cole is from St. Croix USVI. When they're not sailing, they're talking about sailing. And uh, <laughs> we'll keep the next one. They're, they they claim they're the most fun sailing team or the funnest sailing team in all of college sailing. Good on them. Yeah, these, wick, these downwinds are wicked fast. Man, these downwinds, they are short and sweet, but fast. So it's definitely, the, the breeze is definitely up since that last attempted race for A Division. As, as you can see, their sails are filled, they're having a good time, and, and uh, race one is nearly done for A Division. So now they've shaken off that rust and dust, and uh, we're ready to rock and roll. Yeah, it looks like the top Five or six have a pretty nice lead ahead of this uh, this bigger pack in the A division, and they look like they're cruising to the finish. Amazing. Now where's Georgetown in this mix? How are they doing this race? Where's boat six? There we go. Yeah, Georgetown having a pretty good race here. I'd say in the top 10 for sure. Boat six is right there next to 13. That's Coast Guard. Next to five, that is Fordham. Next to 10, right behind 10, that is Stanford. I'll tell you what, Michelle Larkamp has done such a stellar job across all these nationals. But she's also on day 10 of sailing. How exhausting must that be, Charlotte? Yeah, I, you know, I, I have immense respect for her. The fact that, you know, she's really shown the women's and the team race. And, you know, now hopefully in the open that she is one of the, probably the top sailors in college sailing. You Easily. know, and this, this is her senior year. So I feel mm -hmm. like going on day 10, you know, I feel like she's in her head maybe thinking, you know, this is my last shot. I gotta, I gotta give him, give him all I got in these ten days. Right, and I, I can't help but, but cheer her on and cheer on especially all the seniors because, you know, there's plenty to do after college sailing and so on. But, uh, I mean, you're doing, you're doing something incredible right now. You're uh, Olympic campaigning, which we'll talk about right after this finish. Um, there's boat ten, Stanford. As you know, those leading boats. Didn't change very much throughout that upwind. I think it's with this current, it's we're not seeing the leaders change change around too much. It's pretty consistent across the course, but 
There you've got boat three. Oh. That's boat three brown, was it not? Oh. 13 Coast Guard. Six Georgetown. There's that 13 Coast Guard. Six Georgetown. Seven, I believe. Maybe that was 11, folks. I heard eight, nine. So that's MIT St. Mary's. 12, Tulane. 14, Navy. And just like that, within 25 minutes, race one of A Division has been completed. We had a fun game. We're always looking uh, to have a little bit of fun here in the broadcast booth. If there's a team or parent listening. I'm feeling quite snackish. And uh, to whoever brings me the best snack can come sit in the booth with me for this next race. So if uh, you got a good snack, bring it over and uh, we can chit chat. Just, uh, just an idea. I'm just, I'm feeling quite snackish. It's that time of day. It's five o'clock. Usually you dinner around, around this time, but, but not as of recent. No. Here you see all, all the sailors are talking to their coaches. It's nice to have the on the water coaching. It's extremely well. Of course, this event is extremely well led by, by the U.S. Merchant Marine. Academy. Just an excellent setup for spectators, coaches, sailors, parents, and uh, and me. I wonder if any of the coaches have brought some snacks for their sailors. I remember when yeah. I did college sailing, we loved uh, on our team, it was uh, fruit snacks. Mm, that's a common and one, yeah. Especially our women's team. And I think we had the we had the regular pack, and then you could get the tropical pack. Oh, wait, which brand? Uh, Mott's? Were you guys yeah. Mott's fruit snackers? No, no, no. It was a. Uh, I'm trying to remember the brand. Um, we, I feel like we often, I think we we often found ourselves with the Mott's, with the Mott's snacks. We are big Mott's fruit snackers. Can't complain, can't complain. What else did we eat? Oh yes, oh chewy bars. Uh oh, I've got my first snack. Oh yeah. <laughs> chewy bars, actually, fun fact. That was really sweet of you, though. It was a good attempt. I'm gonna give you a second try. Second try. You got a, You got another chance. You got another chance. Oh wait, that's so sweet. Oh, that's so so very, nice. very lovely Georgetown Hoya sailor just walked up to me and she, she was handing me chewy bars and, and uh, for, that was the one granola bar that I know a lot of people ate in college sailing. I for some reason was never. I don't have much of a sweet tooth. She's so sweet. I was like, um, uh, you can, you can have another shot at uh, giving me, you know, what other snacks you got. She was like, I didn't even really want to go on the broadcast. My friend just texted me and told me to feed you. <laughs> it was quite sweet. That was very sweet of her. Yeah, if anyone has our team, I looked up what the brand we had was Welch's. Oh, Welch's snacks. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those we, are good. Uh, I like um, those. I'm pretty sure in the in the regular, the traditional pack, we mm. were looking for uh, peaches because that's a oh. rare com camaraderie for the... Um, for the fruit snacks, so we always oh. our team always counted how many peaches we got in a in a pack, and then oh. for the tropical flavor, we'd 
I think counted how many kiwis we got, and I think one time they had we, kiwis in there. Yeah, they were pretty good. Wow. And I think one time one of, one of my teammates pulled out five, and that's what our team loved was fruit snacks, and I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. And uh, honestly, so really great thing. We've got uh, Bill Ward. If Bill Ward is uh, waiting to chit chat with me right now, so um, he's a coach at St. Mary's College of Maryland. My lovely Bill. Um, Bill, tell us what you're seeing out there. Hey, Gloria, can, you, can, can I can you hear, hear you. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt your granola bar talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Hit me with uh, what you're seeing out there. Well, it's a lot of current. And yeah. Yeah. How did how did the Seahawks do there? They they seemed like they had a little bit they were kind of mid-fleetish there, no? Yeah, it looks like we're mid-fleet and B. Yeah. And a little worse than that A. So uh, for somebody who always struggled in current, uh, like myself, Bill, uh, what's some piece of advice you would give to the sailors that are out there in some pretty strong current right now? Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. OK. Well, we think there's a, a less on the left side upwind, so you can get over there. It's good. Nice. Well, that's good. Well. Bill, thank you so much for uh, joining me. Do you, uh, you want to say hi to uh, Liam if he's watching hi, one day? <laughs> Liam is uh, Bill's son. Very lovely. Very lovely. But uh, so I'm just trying to watch us here. You're good. Well, uh, folks, you heard it from Bill. Bill, thank you so much. We appreciate you. And uh, yeah, great. Thanks for giving us coverage out there. Awesome. So you you heard it there. That was that was Bill Ward, uh, one of my former coaches from St. Mary's College, Maryland. Uh, extremely talented sailor. He he's actually a Georgetown alumni, um, and just a fantastic coach. The Seahawks are super lucky to have him um, and War and Adam Warblow. So um, yeah, like he said, we think currents currents. There's less current out left. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I'm seeing a little bit of a current line along the left side of the shore. So. Uh, you might be seeing some big hands for room tack out by this seawall. What do you think, Charlotte? Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, yeah, out, the, out here right now, I'm looking out there. It's, you know, a little faint line coming down, and it seems like, you know, the closer you get to the wall, the shallower the water, and, you know, less current less current towards the, towards the land. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if, um, like last race, uh, more, more of the sailors starting towards the pin and, trying to even make the pin um so uh we'll see we'll see yeah so now we're just in a little bit of a holding pattern uh waiting to start off this next race i am seeing the race committee is moving the weather marks windward windward marks right now so we're just in a little bit of a holding pattern until they complete that but folks just hang on take a look at the sailors and and I'll be sure to keep talking at you when uh, once this race goes underway. Just hang on, folks. We're just going to go to that quick break.
Zim and West Coast Sailing. We have the gear you need at a great price, backed by fast shipping and outstanding service. As proud partners of College Sailing, Zim and West Coast Sailing offer 15% discounts to student athletes on all apparel and soft goods. Get all the top brands including Gill, Rooster, Zyke, Ronstan, and more. Go to zimsailing.com slash college sailing or westcoastsailing.net slash scholastic-sailing for details and to apply for your student athlete discount code today. All right, folks, and we are back. So right now they are starting off race 2A. Um, that is in 420s. And it looks like the start is going off in about five seconds. Um, 
So here's the update. So race committee essentially took that starting, uh, that, that entire race course and just shifted it out a little bit more. Uh, that way sailors would not be running into these, this break wall, which has very nice large rocks right below it. Um, so, so the name of the game there is, is uh, avoid uh, boat damage and avoid fouls. And like you were hearing Bill Ward say just prior to this race, um, the sailors want to go to the left for current relief. I'm right now. I'm even looking at uh, what seems to be a current relief line that is uh, over to the left-hand side of the course, shallower waters. Here, boat 18 seems to have gotten a straight, a uh, very great start off of that pen, tacking over and appears to be having a very nice port cross here. Uh, that's 18 Yale. Uh, Boat four taking a duck on them. That's boat four, Dartmouth. Boat nine, just below boat nine, that is St. Mary's Seahawks. So you're seeing some top players out to the left. Well, also worth noting, you know, the Seahawks in the semifinals had finished in second. So I'm curious to see how they'll play out here on the two days of finals. So um, you see 14 kind of trailing behind. That's Navy. Kind of hidden lower left here. Boat six, that is the Fordham Rams. But I'm seeing definitely a, a few more boats kind of hit in the middle right-ish here in this race. So that's boat four as well. Brown on the left-hand side, just on the hip of uh, boat 18 from Yale. So let's see, 14 taking a duck here. Um, so yeah, very well done by race committee. They were super quick to, to move that, that race course out more towards the bridge. Beautiful tack by boat six, Georgetown. That was picturesque. So, you know, this current is definitely far stronger. I don't think I saw it as strong in any of the other days. Um, um, so yeah, that's, it's, Charlotte, what was your kind of uh, advice or what worked for you in, in sailing in big current? Yeah, it was definitely, um, well, uh, sailing out of Jacksonville University, we had, we were on a small river called the St. John's, and um, any of my teammates at home know, or people that have sailed at JU know that it rips there, oh, and I wow. um, actually never really sailed in current venues before going to college. I sailed in San Francisco, which kind of feels like a little bit like today in a flood tide, but um, I think big things are... Uh, you know, which direction it's going to go upwind, you know, you're going to be a little bit slower. Um, ley lines are going to be a lot larger, so you're not going to be able to hit right on ley line um, early on. So late, late approaches to the mark um, so that you're not being drifted down by the current. Um, yeah, ley lines are, ley lines are a big thing. Pen, um, pen closes off pretty quickly. Boat opens up a little bit more um, when we're marked ley line. Um, gets a bit, bit bigger, and then downwinds are just, you know, staying in the in the current. So, you know, I think first race, um, if we were a bit, now that we're further out, it's not, um, we can't really get much current relief, it doesn't seem like. Mm -hmm. So um, when we were closer to the wall, I would say, you know, um, the top group did it pretty well, went towards the shallower water, so get a little bit relief from the, from the mm, more... Uh, stronger current and then you know downwind staying in that current because it's going to rip you down downwind um, yeah. and then vice versa everything um is, uh, is the opposite when it's going out the other direction and then side current as well so um uh yeah i think whenever you can get some current relief and then if not you know use the current to your advantage um so yeah and so now i mean i'm, I'm sure that you do lots of lots of sailing and current as well in the laser and all your different venues and i'd love to talk about that more right after we take a look at rodrigo the man the myth the legend that's rodrigo there you see him holding up the camera rodrigo doesn't take shortcuts he doesn't compromise rodrigo does it the hard way there he is look at him go just like rodrigo coral reef sailing apparel believes in doing it the hard way taking the time, care, and effort to getting it right. Thanks, Coral Reef. We appreciate you. 
and Rodrigo, if you can hear me, we appreciate you too. Look at how look at how he conducts the boat so beautifully. He's like a conductor of an orchestra, except the orchestra is a media boat. And uh, kudos to all of our volunteers out there and all of our hard workers. So thanks again, Coral Reef, and uh, right back to that racing coverage. So you know what is what is probably the you know. Charlotte, you're doing an, an Olympic campaign right now in the in the laser radial or Ilka Six, as I may call them. Um, yeah, and so tell me tell me a little bit about about uh, what. Walk me through that. Walk me through that. You're a full time athlete. This is this is your full time job. Tell me tell me what it's like. Yeah, so it's it's definitely something a lot different than I. Um, ever experienced before, you know, um, in high school, you know, I sailed, um, I'm from Houston, so I, I sailed out of Houston Yacht Club, joined uh, GCYSA, and um, that was a lot of structured sailing. I had high school, you know, as well, and I was able, I did swimming and water polo during school, so I had a very structured schedule. The same with, you know, college sailing, you know, we had practices three times a week, you know, travel up for regattas on the weekend and then back down, um, but now, you know, uh, campaigning, you know, I gotta, I gotta focus on. Okay, what, what's my best schedule for training, as well as my teammates, um, logistics. So where, what, where do we want to go to train? Which regattas we want to do, um, and then um, budgeting as well. So you know, gotta raise some money to make sure that I can sail around the world with the top athletes, and uh, also, yeah, pretty much my daily life is, you know, in the gym as much as possible, getting stronger, um, getting fitter, so I keep keep my game up with the top girls in the international fleet and then just getting experience as well so um definitely a whole different game than than i'm that i was used to a year ago so uh i, I love the journey and um can't wait for next year you know that's amazing yeah and uh you know just like as we see you leading out in uh, on the olympic on the olympic circuits we see some boats coming around this windward mark um there's boat 12, I missed quite a few, but 12, Tulane, 6, Georgetown, 9, St. Mary's, 10, Stanford, 17, URI, 8, MIT, 7, Harvard, ooh, that's a little bit of a tough one for Harvard, 15, um, U Miami, 2, Bowdoin, let's take a look at some of those leaders as well, so Right now, you've got kind of nine punched up a little bit ahead. St. Mary's, boat six. There's Fordham. Fordham having a stellar job, doing a stellar job, especially in the semis, just clinching their way to the top nine. Boat 12, that's Tulane. I thought I saw an inverted bat in there. I was like, no, oh, no, no. Boat 18, there's Yale. 13, that's going to be Coast Guard. And boat four leading by a strong, pretty good strong lead there. That's uh, the Brown Bears. I apologize, boat four, that is Dartmouth. That is Dartmouth, not Brown. My apologies, that is Dartmouth leading this race by a good amount. So well done, Dartmouth. And these downwinds there, I mean, there's not much Personally, I like the downwinds. I think they, they, I felt like I had stronger downwinds. That was my opportunity where I'd usually pick up boats. On a day like today, I mean, you don't have that much opportunity to, with the current pushing you f so quickly downwind. Your downwinds are short. They're like two and a half minutes. Charlotte, what are you doing to pick, up, pick off some boats on these short, short, short downwinds? I think biggest thing is, you know, clear air, trying to get to a side. Um, but also, you know, the current's ripping you down and you don't really want, like you can see here, most of the boats are um, wing, as I like to say. I wing. don't know if there's a different term for that no, that I other people use. Wing. Oh, you yeah, use, wing? use wing? Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, trying to trying to keep going with the current. Um, yeah, trying to, trying to get, it's still pretty light out, so I'd say try to keep to an edge and get clear air in these short, short downwinds. <laughs> Oh yeah, and try not to keep with the group. Boats that sail together go slow together. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely the kind of person on my upwinds where I like to kind of get out and away from the other boats. I think I I sail best when when I'm kind of on my own. 
uh, rather than in a clump. I never liked being in clumps, but wow, look at how spread all these boats are on this downwind. Usually I feel like you see quite a tighter, tighter race in this one, so may have missed a shift, but uh, it just seems to be that the left, you, you get kind of a top left, uh, lefty up at the top. Um, so we're seeing, it's definitely shifty. It's definitely shifty, currents up. This is definitely tight, tight, tight racing. I mean, these boats are quite neck and neck. Even yeah, you, you can see now everyone's compressing towards the, the um, gates and- Oh yeah. It's like four boats on the left, you can see on your screen are coming, coming down at the same time. Yeah, pretty pretty tight racing. Definitely tight. Within racing like here. maybe thirty not even thirty seconds of each other. Probably less. From the first boat to last boat. Yeah, it looks like it's almost taking like what? About uh twenty seconds if if even. I would say like twenty seconds for the entire fleet to just round there. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to uh on our on the screen here, you know, um, like last race, seems like the majority of the fleet are heading out to, to the left side, maybe to get some relief, maybe to get some more breeze out on, on the left. Um, I could kind of see out from, from the box here that um, the right kind of doesn't seem like it's there's much wind, but it looks pretty strong on the left in terms of breeze. So uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, honestly, the breeze is, is it's not, it's not that it's not good, but I feel like it could be better. Like, I feel like I expected slightly more breeze in a southerly. So I'm curious to see. I mean, it's it's just about what time? 5.30. So I think this is what we're going to get. And I think the what I'm confident of is that we are going to get three, at least three races done in each, in each division. So I'm confident, whereas uh, a few days ago when, when we were looking at the forecasts, today and tomorrow both look bad whereas now we have this beautiful southerly that's filled in today in the end the goal is to m get those minimum races done we'll see what happens maybe the breeze will continue to kind of die down a bit because yeah i'm not seeing anybody hiking as much as they were before um so i'm still confident we'll get at least three races done each and uh and so on yeah as you can see here uh boat four um Dartmouth um, coming out from the left, and it seems like boat boat 18, if I'm yeah, boat 18, oh, Yale yeah. coming out from the right. It looks like Dartmouth has that cross. Pretty, yeah, looks close, but Dartmouth seems like they're crossing. Oh yeah, boat 17, URI seems like oh, I'm gonna go right, so. Um, we'll see what they do. We saw them going right yesterday. We saw them right was right for them. They were they were hitting the right side pretty hard yesterday. So I'm I'm somehow not surprised that they're uh, doing the same today. Um, it just seemed to have worked for them. And uh, let's see how it pays off though. I, I don't know. It just looks like 12 is going much faster here. Yeah, 12 two lane looks like it might have to cross on 18. We'll see but they look like they're moving pretty well. The left looks looks strong. Yeah, you can definitely, I mean, it's, you can still see the current line. It looks like seven is just getting into the current line here. Who's tacking right behind 16, you'll see him. Uh, which leads me to believe that 12 must have hit that current line as well and kind of sailed them, picked off some boats there. I'm just not sure the right side is, is, is really paying off for those boats. They look really, really slow outright. So, leads me to believe that you want to stay in the pressure. So, to get you through that current as fast as possible. And so that's where I can see the left left hand side here paying off. And boat 12 looks like, the, I mean, they're picking up boats. And I think it's from going out to the left hand side. Yeah, yeah I think they've gained a little bit on boat four. Right. Maybe they're going to duck, or maybe boat four is going to attack. Right. We'll see. Boat four was definitely leading with a pretty good pretty good lead, or a significant gap, rather, Yeah. beforehand. And now you see by extending out right, it just, I just can't see that paying off necessarily. Yeah. 
And I'm just trying to keep an eye out for boat 18, who's kind of sticking. He's he's trusting the right. So I, I'm curious to see how they're going to pan out in this race, just because they were one of those boats that didn't come back to the left-hand side just as much as boat four was. Yeah, it looks like majority of A division seems like they're on on port tack. Um, and a lot of the a lot of the sailors on the on the right side don't seem very very fast at the moment. No, um, it's it's definitely much slower out there, isn't it, Charlotte? Yeah. So Charlotte, where do you like sailing better, freshwater or or uh, salt water with all the current? Um I wouldn't say I'd say well, fresh fresh water, you're, you're sitting a little bit lower in the water, so you're you know not as fast. Um, plus side is you don't have to wash off the boat because it's fresh water. Mm -hmm. um, but I really like the ocean venues. Uh, you know, the sail on St. John's is pretty great, but uh, mm. I really like the open water and the and the big waves. So mm. um, salt water for me. Yeah, you know. It's interesting. I think the one reason why I always love the freshwater is definitely just like the easier boat maintenance. But but now that you mention it, I'm like, yeah, maybe uh, I always did like the waves and the salt water. It just it's something different, something different, really neat. And so, folks, these races they're gonna be a lot longer. These upwinds are sometimes brutal, and. Uh, and uh, these are brutally long, quite honestly. And uh, it's now it'd be a lot different if the crews were hiking the whole time, but but that's just not the case. Looks like boat four rounded in first place with a little bit of a lead. That's boat four from Dartmouth. So a little bit of a hot take. They went for that jibe. Why did they jibe? I can tell you why. It's because they want to go into the current for the downwinds here. So, boat 12 trailing right behind. That's yeah, two see, lane. You can see boat four really extended right after the mark. His mm. lead away from the pack just because of that current. Yep. Boat nine. That is St. Mary's coming around third place. 18, Yale in fourth. S boat seven. That's Harvard. I lost track of how many... That is, but uh, that's okay. Boat 16 now rounding. That's Pennsylvania Quakers. Boat 1, Boston College. Followed by Boat 8. That's going to be MIT. Boat 10. That is Stanford. And you can see how that current is just pushing people down onto the marks. Oof. It is tough to try and pinch your way around these marks, quite honestly. It's about 17. And now they're going, I believe this is their final downwind, is it not? Yep, so final downwind to the to the finish. Amazing. And so, so for those of you that are watching this and, and are like, I don't know much about sailing. I, I don't know much about current. What is what do you what do you mean you want to go into the current on the downwind? So like Charlotte was kind of explaining earlier today, when you when the current's pushing you against you, you want to try and go where there's as little current as possible because you want, ideally you want to get out of that current. If it's going against you, it's slowing you down. So that's why on these upwinds, and uh, keep in mind that current's much stronger where it's deeper waters. So you want to go where it's shallow where there's less current. So you'll oftentimes on these upwinds, they're finding, and we call it current relief, closer to shallow water, which is presumably right along this wall of spectators. So on the upwinds, you'll see people kind of going out towards, towards us, towards towards the Marine Merchant Academy, right? And then on the downwinds, now, because you're going, you're going down towards, downwinds, right? Down with the wind. You want to go with the current. So instead of going where there's less current and shallow water, you're like, no, 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 I got to go to the deep water where there's plenty of current and it pushes and propels me forward. Um, so that's just for those of you that may be watching. I mean, heck, we I grew up without current, you know, in Lake Michigan. So 
when I got to college, I was like really struggling in current venues. So an explanation like this, I'd be like, wow, that's really simplified. That's that's good. That's good. That's good. So, you know, and some of you may be watching this and being like, I don't need an explanation on current. That's fine. You can just skip forward. <laughs> <laughs> So here, a very nice close-up here of Boat 8. That is M-I-T in A Division. Let's go ahead and just take a look at this crew. Let's watch their roll job. I always like, liked, oh, a little bit of jib. Oh, okay, just roll to a reach. Well done by the crew. Oh, interesting main trim there. That was stunning. You see the crew is just reaching out their arm, trying to ex extend it as far as possible. And a little bit of pressure, you want to kind of take that jib sheet and just hold it a little bit more down. You can see, I know Charlie was talking, now it's, the jib looks beautiful here. But as Charlie was talking about it yesterday, you'll oftentimes see people holding their jib a little bit too high. And you'll watch as the top of the leech, so basically where you can see the stripes on your screen at the top of that jib, that smaller sail up front of the main. You can see those stripes. And so you can kind of watch, uh, imagine the, when the wind hits that, it may bleed over if that leech is open. The leech is where those stripes were. So that's, uh, but I think these crews, they're all top level. So, yeah, just taking a look at the finish here. We've got boat 18. Oh. Uh, well, four already finished, but boat 18 from Yale, well done. Just snaking ahead of boat nine, St. Mary's at the finish there, followed by boat seven. That's going to be Harvard. And this one, that's six, six, that's Georgetown. Eight, that's MIT. Sixteen as well, that is Pennsylvania Quakers. Boat 10, Stanford, 15, U Miami, 13, Coast Guard. Right next to Coast Guard was boat 14, that is Navy, 17, URI. So URI, I believe, was one of those furthest right boats. I think that's a telltale sign for us that the right is not right today. No, I think your left is law today. So that was race 2A, folks. That was a 23-minute race. Kyle is just nailing these. He's doing a great job of just cranking them out. So what we're going to see now is our A-Division sailors are going to come to shore and do a, uh, a rotation. Unless this is happening on water, and I was just unaware. But I believe that the sailors are going to be coming to shore and rotating boats. Or honestly, I, I think I'm mistaken. I think they're just doing on-water rotations. Yeah, I think it's on-the-water rotations. That makes sense. Yep. So we're gonna see some on the water rotations here for A Division. Sit tight as we shortly get coverage of the B Division race that is currently on their, I think, final downwind here. Folks, I'm just going to take a really quick break here. Uh, go sip on some water, perhaps uh, tinkle time, and uh, we're just going to take a quick break, so hold on. The U.S. Merchant Marine Academy really is the world's best kept secret. This is the best of both worlds, combining military academies and the maritime academies. Our core values are respect, honor, and service. My academic background is very rigorous. You spend 300 days at sea on commercial ships. You receive a bachelor's of science degree, your third mate's or your third engineer's license, and then a commission into the Naval Reserve. It's challenging, but that's the reason I came here. We are the next generation of leaders for this country. 
All right, so uh, you can see here on your cameras, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, uh, A Division is rotating on the water. I think because uh, I think it's going to take a little bit too long to sail all the way to shore and switch on land. Um, then um, you can see here that the B Division is coming down on their last uh, last downwind leg to the to the finish on uh, race two. Um, it's looking a bit bit light out. Um, we'll see if the if the wind the wind keeps where it is. Hello. What's your name? <laughs> Jeffrey, nice to meet you. This is Jeffrey, everyone. And what, what school do you sail for? Uh, I uh, go to Georgetown. I'm a sophomore at Georgetown University. Um, you know, enjoying a lovely day here at the first day of the finals for fleet racing. It's nice. going to be a good day. Nice. So ha have, you, have you been here for all of team racing and uh, co-ed semis? Indeed I have. We've been uh, we've been up here for four days now and uh, the women's team actually has been up here for, this is day 11 for them. Wow. So it's been uh, it's been quite a journey to, you know, get through all these regattas and, you know, to try to finish out and take a tremendous amount of endurance from them. We've had a, uh, one of our crews has been sailing every single day. She sailed 11 wow. days straight. She's still going star. strong. So it's, uh, it's pretty impressive to see all the crews and skippers out there going through and you know, sailing these many days in a row, it's not easy stuff. Yeah, for sure. No, like in, in the sun, I'm sitting out here on this booth and I'm, I'm hoping that I don't get sunburnt and it's, it's pretty tiring. So I bet, I bet a lot of sailors are feeling it now more than ever. And th you can see the, the finish line is just there. So, um, yeah, so I don't know, maybe take us some, um, take us through like what your team has done so far building up to this event. I saw that Georgetown won Western yep. semifinals, so uh, kind of go talk me through of what you know what your team's been working on this year, and um, I guess like the mentality that they went into for the semis. Yeah, sure. So you know, the, obviously it's a it's a whole team effort. We've got probably one of the biggest teams in college sailing at 51 people, so we've got quite a big roster. So it's been a monumental effort trying to get you know our starters ready to go for the season, uh, running race days and trying to experiment with. Uh, different locations on the Potomac River where we sail and trying to get used to more current like we're seeing out there on the race course today or different wind shifts or waves and chop, um, some conditions that we've seen over the past couple days here racing. And uh, so we've been really trying to experiment and get, get more experience in conditions like this because we don't have the ability to sail here in KP. So we kind of have to, to make it work. So we've been practicing really hard and trying to find you know, all the little gains. It's, I mean, when you get to this level, every team out there on the water is good. You're seeing North, you know, we're seeing all Americans get first one race and put up an 18 the next race. Yeah, and so exactly. it really comes down to you know, the team's ability to make those micro gains. Can they pass one or two boats on the beat? You know, do they give up when they get in the back or are they fighting every single way through the, the finish line? So we've been trying to push and find out where we can find those micro gains and then we try to implement them into our sailing. Yeah, that sounds that sounds really awesome. You know, like every point counts, especially in college sailing. You know, you do so many races and no drops, which yep. is pretty insane to me and with the racing I've done. Uh, we, we usually get one or two drops in a in a series. So, uh, wow, that's really good. Yeah, going going, uh, you know, take the semifinals, for instance, you get 13 races, no drops. And that actually is 26 races because you have A and B. Yeah, so 26 correct. races and you get no drops. So. The, the, our coach always says it like this. It's like the way we, the way you can win a regatta like this is to take your, you know, your 12s when you go around the mark and turn them into eights, yeah. right? Not being over, not fouling. Like you just want to avoid those big 18s that we call them the big home run mistakes. Yeah, you want, if you can avoid those, you know, every, every team out here is going to have a bad race once in a while. And it's a matter of just taking top tens, top tens, top fives in this level is going to win regattas. You don't need to go out and win every race. It's a matter of just staying consistent and staying better than everyone else. Yeah, exactly. I'm I'm pretty sure, isn't the average right that people usually win a national championship is top eight? Is eight? Yeah, it's six like somewhere. It's like somewhere between six and eight yeah, is the so average finish place. That just goes to show how how difficult you know. Like some people may think you know one twos or threes are going to win a regatta, but you know here anything can happen. You know you have a good set. You know top eight and then the next set can go pretty pretty poorly so um yeah i totally agree with the whole um you know mindset you know resetting trying to trying to work and gain back as many points as you can 
you know, it's it's not over until it's over. So, yeah. you know, you got to put in 100% effort whenever you can. Absolutely. There's always there's always attempts, you know, and there's always opportunities to get get back in front of people. Even coming down all the way to the last race, you saw in the semifinal and the semifinals yesterday, it came down to quite literally the last race and the last beat where boats were passing other people. Boston College sneaking in there, passing boats on the Dowin Lake to make sure that they to secure their qualification for today's sailing. So. There's never, you know, there's there's no opportunity to give up in college selling. There's just too too much at stake and too many, you know, variables to to leave out hanging there. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so uh, I think boats are going into into rotation now, um, going into race three and four. Um, I don't know if We're you guys. You guys heard that, but they're about to start um, going to sequence for the A division. This will be this will be race three A in the series. So it, just for you know anyone watching, the weather was tough today. We didn't get to sail until about three o'clock. The race committee only needs three races to constitute a series. So if they're able to get these two off, we have a regatta, and then yeah, from there, the extra races are bonus points. Yeah, that's the important part for sure. Yeah. It's a tricky race course out there. It's been it's been really dynamic ever since the Southerly filled in. It was pretty unstable at first. They actually had to call off one or two races because they were a little ambitious to get out and start. But now we've got a beautiful Southerly at I don't know what do you say like eight knots maybe. Yeah, Generous. maybe maybe a little bit less. Maybe like six or seven. Yeah, six or but seven. It's uh, it's a beautiful race course though. Great day. Very tricky sailing, though. It may look beautiful out here and very calm, but it is not easy sailing out there. There's big right-hand shifts, big left-hand shifts. We're listening in on the uh, the VHF of the race committee, and there's big oscillations to be had out there. There's opportunities. You know, we've seen leaders come from the right, come from the left, and so it's uh, it's very, very tricky sailing out there. It is not a, a formulaic race in any way. It's not a start of the pin, bang the left. It, it is it's all to play for out there. Yeah, I feel like a, I feel like a lot of college venues are are like that. It's nice here because you know we get so much room. We get a little view of the city. Um, you know, we get we get all the factors. I feel like most college venues kind of have you. They get inconsistent breeze on a river where there's a ton of current. You sail on a lake where there's no breeze. You know, I feel like this venue really is given all of the kind of combination of most of college college venues so uh yeah. yeah absolutely and i think we've been we've been very lucky to want to be be gr blessed with the very nice facilities at kp but also blessed with some pretty good long island weather for anyone who doesn't live in the area long island in the spring and early summer is usually not too kind to those who like to go sailboat racing so we've been we've been locking out we've had to wait a little bit but we've gotten very lucky with days like today are you from up here? I'm actually not. I, uh, I'm actually from Southern California, but I, most of our team is from here, so we've got a little bit of local insider knowledge okay. there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm from Houston, Texas, so right now it's, it's pretty hot. Pretty hot, and it's just going to get worse. So uh, I'm a little glad that I'm up here for, for a couple days, to say the least. Yeah, so. it's definitely got to be a little bit, little bit cooler than out in Texas. Yeah, so going back to the screen to to folks at folks at home, we got boat nine here. Um, and that's Stanford, Stanford Cardinals. We got Michelle Larkamp and uh, f forgive me, I I don't have the uh, crew sheet up, but um, you can see that she was standing up in the boat. Um, that's a kind of a strategy or pre-race routine strategy that some sailors use to try to see where the breeze is. So if you get in sailing, if you go a little, stand up a little bit higher above the water, you, you're able to see, kind of get a bigger view of, uh, of what's going on on the race course. So, um, you know, she's probably looking, okay, where's the best breeze coming from next? Where should I probably start? Um, yeah, so you can see here, we're, we're coming up to a minute 30 for, uh, for the um, A division uh, group. Um, you can kind of see a lot of people are kind of stacking towards the the committee boat, kind of getting themselves set up. So uh, we'll see how this pans out. Yeah, it's looking that that indicates to me that a lot of these sailors are looking to go right early out of the start line. Here we see a big stack up in boat 16, is barely even halfway. They're they're about halfway down the line there with a lot of room at the pin there. So everyone kind of signaling, hey, we want to go to the right. We think there's maybe a little bit of right hand shift out there to be had. Yeah, or Honestly, it might be 
they don't want to get too close to the pin because it's it's pretty the the current's pretty strong and they might not make it. Yeah, that's true. You can see a lot of boats if where this camera is aiming at the pin. That's where the line is. So a lot of boats, boats three, nine, four. A lot of people are bowed back from the line. It's just because there's so much downhill current and it's really tricky for these sailors because you don't want to roll the dice and get and be be called over, but you also want to push the line as much as possible. Yeah, exactly. You can just see here, boat five, seventeen, eight are just trying to get up to the get up to the start line, and that just really shows it's one light, and two the currents just pushing pushing everybody down. So um, yeah, boat boat sixteen's really fighting hard here with fifteen seconds left on the clock. They're pretty close to the pin. We'll see if they can get away here. It's gonna be close. I'm not sure. Oh, I think uh, they got it. No, they oh, just barely didn't make it. Oh, 13's not going to make it either. I think a lot of these boats are real high and slow. Maybe a little bit of a left shift off the line. We're yeah. seeing a lot of boats dive away out of the pin. I don't know if 11's going to make it either. Oh, just barely, oh, barely didn't make it. That's two lane. Tulane, lucky start. Yeah, Tulane got them. it right. There's that was five boats cycling out yeah. of the pin at go. Yeah, boat four, um, Brown. Um, if not, if I'm not mistaken, yep. had a pretty good start. You know, clear start, tacked off onto a onto a left shift, and now just trying to go fast. Yeah, this is going to be a drag race here between 11, 1, and 17. 11 is going to be looking to attack as soon as possible to try to cover off the fleet going out to that right-hand side. You see 9 go, and I expect 17 and 1 to soon follow. Yeah. Yeah, you can see boat 9. Oh, never mind. Oh. They're attacking back. But you can kind of see here the um, looks like boat 4 looks pretty wound up on a left shift as well as 3. Also, I'm I'm pretty sure that the race committee's uh, shortened the course just a tad, so uh, we'll see if it, it makes the makes the racing a little bit more congested. Yeah, the race committee they were uh, on the radio. They were talking about trying to bring the race about a minute closer. So they were saying that because there's so much downhill current, the upwind beats are taking a little bit too long. So they've punched that weather mark in a little bit closer. And now you see 11's gone over, so they're able to get over one. And it's going to be interesting to see. We've got leaders from the right and the left. That boat 11 is Tulane, looking really good and fast out here on the left-hand side of this race course. Yeah, as well as 17, Yale. Um, they, yeah, they look pretty, pretty good coming out from the left right now. You can see on the screens here, Cruz, I have so much immense, you know, respect for Cruz, just moving, trying to be dynamic, trying to keep the boat flat and moving fast. Um, you can see here in the videos, they're constantly in and out. Here you can see Harvard doing a nice tack. Nice tack by Harvard here, boat eight. Now it looks, uh, it looks like to me, boat four, um, that's brown, consolidated and tacked up underneath boat Tulane and Yale coming in from the left-hand side. So it looks like early winners coming out of the left-hand side of this race course. Oh, that's, a, that's a tough one. Harvard having to duck through 18. That's URI and probably, oh, 13 had to take a little duck there. Maybe a little protest. Well, maybe not. Keeping it clean out there. Yeah, I think you can tell on your screens here, it just seems like there's a, a little bit more breeze on the left, um, a little darker water um, than on the right, and it looks like majority of the fleet has flopped onto port, so that kind of is an indicator that there's been a left shift, um, so. Yeah, it's been really interesting. It's been really tricky to track, because one moment the breeze comes hard in out of the right, and boats get steamrolled on the left and the other minute you know the entire fleet crosses you on that left and right now i think if i were a betting man i'd probably put my money on this left hand side the boats that are way in the far of the screen there, kind of by the first tower of that bridge look to be pretty bowed down and in, in noticeably less breeze um than the boat compared to boats on the left but the boats on the left are bowed back so it's you know it's a little bit of a leverage game to see how when they come back together who's still ahead yeah i agree 
Yeah, it seems like from what I've seen in, you know, fleet racing and team race, the right has really been paying mo most of the time, and now it's kind of changed to pretty pretty strong lefty today, right? Yeah, it's pretty, it's, it is quite interesting. We saw this Southerly in day one and two of the team race championship, and there were righties to be had, and I think Kern is playing a big, big factor in making the right and left look good. I think the breeze is actually relatively stable, but it's the big differences in depth as you go across the race course. Um, but you know, as you know, as we were saying that the left was working, here comes seven from the right hand side, looking quite strong and pretty bow forward there. So, yep. So we're gonna we're gonna switch over to B division start here. We'll see um, if it's if you know B division sailors saw a lot of sailors didn't make the pin. So maybe we're gonna start a little bit farther up here. So let's see how this pans out for B division. Already we got 15 seconds to go. Seems like everyone's getting going now. You've already had one boat cycle out at the pin, and we're probably going to see... Oh, boat one's going to push it. They're definitely going to be over. Yep, boat one. Boat one was was uh, was uh called over, and that's uh, Bowden. That is tough. Yeah, you see in this, this photo, 17-8. Yep, definitely, definitely shows a big left shift coming off the line. They tacked, port, port, tack cross. Yeah, They're looking pretty strong. That's the that's the most golden start in all of sailboat racing. Start yeah. at the pin and tack and cross the entire fleet. Boom, you're in the lead. Yeah, it's pretty rare to <laughs> take a do a port tack start, but when you, when it's successful, man, does it feel freaking good. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So that was boat 17, Yale. For B division, boat eight, Harvard. It's looking a lot lighter now in the racing. You know, see crews sitting in. Yeah, boat, boat five there, Georgetown, Scott Mays, and Addie Harris. It's really struggling this light breeze. And even out of the commentary box here, overall pressure on the race course looks down. We're seeing all the crews and skippers sitting in, trying to adjust their weight to make the boat go as fast as possible in the lighter breeze. Yeah. So kind of talk to me about how, you know, like college sailing compared to other types of sailing, you can bring a roster, right? You can bring multiple crews. So... You know, in this light stuff, you can you you you're allowed to put someone smaller, and if you decide to, and then as well as the heavy one, you can put someone a little bit taller that's able to keep the boat flat. So, kind of talk me through. Yeah. What's that? What that like? What's yeah. that like? Yeah, it's it's cool. College sailing is really special in ter you know in all of sailing in that regard. Normally in sailing, you got to start with your crew, and you're you're with that crew through the entire event. You don't get to make substitutes unless there's an injury. But college sailing says. Hang on, let's be a little bit more inclusive here. Let's also make it a little bit more similar to other college athletics, being able to substitute in different players for different conditions. So there's special rules that regard what sailors can go in what divisions. Um, you know, if you start in Division A, you're not allowed to go down into Division B unless you're accruing. Um, but it, basically what it allows is we can bring, and you can see in the background those three boats and the glare of the sun, those are all the rotation boats, and there's teams out there with extras. If the wind gets heavy, they can put in someone taller. If someone is a little bit better in chop, they can put in a skipper who's a little bit better in chop. So we've got the ability to bring sailors who are you know, sp specific or maybe a little better suited for other conditions to maximize you know, the speed and efficiency we're getting out of these boats. Yeah, that's really cool. So, like, you know, that even puts more emphasis on, you know, teamwork. You know, a good crew can sail with anybody, and a good skipper can sail with anybody as well. So it just really comes down to, you know, communication and working together to, you know, make that boat go fast. So um, as we can see here on the screen, you know, boat four, boat 17 look really strong out of the out of the left here. So boat four is brown, coming, coming strong from the left. Boat 17, Yale. Looks really nice right now. And then we could see a boat all the way out on the right. I think that's boat one, Bowden. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe they'll get some pressure and the, they might come back from the right. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But majority of the fleet seems like they're flopped onto port. So uh, um, heading up towards the, the top mark. So, yeah. There's a little bit of pressure here for boat four. You can see them kind of hiking out, getting the, or some 
some waves from the back from a motorboat. So, yeah. What's 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 been the spice spice out on the water? Uh, yeah, we're seeing Yale and Brown put up some really good racing in both fleets right now. Um, you can see boat four and boat seventeen going upwind here in this is race three B. Boat seventeen and four were able to port tack the fleet right off the line, get set it in, do a little righty, and then tack on back. Amazing. Yeah, you can you can see now too uh, on your screens boat one, um, boat and boat and boat and bear right. Boat and polar bears. Um, they started the race over right at the at the start and uh, decided to drive out and go right. And they, they seem they seem like they're coming across um, okay. I think I've lost them in the camera, but it looked like they were. Oh nope, they've uh, they flopped back onto port. But they kind of did a hitch up from the from the right and don't look too too bad, too bad right now. So uh, we'll see. There you go. And that's four brown bears. Yeah, they look pretty good. 17 Yale. So yeah, I, I think the left the left seems to be kind of where it's at today. If if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think I think default wise, you know, if I were going to go and get in the boat and start this race, I'd be looking to kind of work my way up that left-hand side too, but I would say that that's not to say to ride off that right-hand side like Bowden, for example. You notice they were over bonded mm. out to that right hand side and it looks like they're rounding in fifth or sixth so that's a great recovery mm. you know especially in a fleet as competitive as this one yeah i think they you know were over rounded and just cleared themselves even though you know they they didn't really go to the to the you know the favored side that most of the fleet went to but you know i think you know if they had the wheels and kept going fast had good breeze and you know a five is not a bad race for um, for a national, so uh, we'll see how. Yeah, you know, those moments that you can take an 18 off the start and turn it into a five, that's what keeps you in the hunt all the time. That's how you know. That's that's what wins regardless. If you put up that 18, that's where you start to fall behind. Yeah, it's definitely all about the fight back. Uh, one thing that I always found useful is if I'm starting in the back, is I just do a net gain thing. So it's like I count. I'm like, okay, plus two on this downwind, minus one on the upwind, plus three on this downwind. You know what I mean? And then I'm like, okay, I net gained X amount of boats. I just want to pick one off, at least one, two, three. The more you pick off, the better. But definitely if you're crawling back from the back back end, it's just a, it's a matter of numbers, right? Yeah. And yeah. then it's easier said than done, too. Fighting oh, back totally. in a fleet like this, especially on a one-sided racetrack like we're seeing right now, makes it really difficult to come back from a, you know a big loss like that. But being able to do so is what sets you apart. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I really agree with Gloria saying, you know, choosing one boat to pick off out of the next like some people who you know like you're in the back you're like okay what if, what if i did this you know what if i instead of you know it was a left track race course i'm gonna bang you know the right corner or be the furthest left you know um taking big risks i don't think are is a very strong thing to do i think taking you know little little gains here and there throughout the race to really pick off boats is, is the important part Right, and I mean, you see, you see how much that one one pick off of a boat can be in in terms of importance. Like we saw how Charleston just missed the cusp of top nine in the semis by one point, and that's yeah. that's one point that you know in in one race, if you if you have given up in the race and you're not focusing on just picking up people one at a time, yeah, that's 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 one point that might be the difference between you going on to finals or uh, or uh, just. Uh, not making it so yeah and, that's, and you know as a sailor when you are looking back at it especially at a race and you know race is over and you look back to all those points where, oh man I, you know i could have crossed that one boat or i could have mm. called starboard on that one boat it starts to eat you up so being able to be clinical and you know compartmentalize about that is also a huge factor in being able to pull yourself back from bad races yeah and you couldn't be more right about that um, and, and you must know something about that as well. You are a match racer, right? Have you talked about that yet? That's correct. No, I haven't talked about it too much. 
Yeah, so you're a big match racer. Tell us a little bit about how that plays into how that you think that helps you out in college sailing. Yeah, I would say, you know, match racing, you know, I, I've been doing it for about six years now. I'm on the world match racing tour and try to, you know, race competitively against people like Taylor Canfield, who've gone through college sailing, you know, some big names. Um, and it's, it's really incredible. And I think it definitely plays a huge factor in development in, you know, in terms of fleet racing. I think all types of sailing are beneficial. Um, mm -hmm. You know, especially as a match racer, if I'm really trying to pick off one boat or, you know, where it's a clear breakaway one, two, I'm pretty confident I'm going to get around you. I, I've got a bit really decent understanding of how to, you know, put myself in a position relative to another boat to gain on them. And I will say, though, that it does sometimes come at a cost because I get a little too focused on just one boat mm. and I forget about the other 17 behind <laughs> me. So, uh, you know, it's, it comes with pluses and minuses. And but I would say, you know, if anyone wants to get into match racing, they should. Yeah, and how would how would somebody go about getting into match racing? What are there's there's some local events around in the U.S. as well as international. Yeah, events. U.S. Sailing's been doing a really good job at trying to promote the you know the sport and the, you know the I guess it's not necessarily a sport; it's more of a division of sailing, mm -hmm. um, like team racing or fleet racing. Right. But there's a lot of events. You know, there's U.S. There's a thing called the USMRC, which is the national championship for match racing, and there are qualifiers that are open to any skipper who is wanting to apply. And those are really good ways for people to get started in match racing. I know Dave Perry and some of the other match racing coaches around the country are working on putting on more clinics for people to come to um, at a discounted cost through North U. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities, a lot of stuff to be found on the U.S. Sailing Match Racing page. That's where a lot of information can be found. And I know there's work really pushing hard, you know, especially on our end, to increase youth match racing and the junior sailing level because it's really not a thing that people get into until they're older, and we're trying to change that and give more opportunities to younger sailors at local yacht clubs around the nation. Amazing. So well said. Yeah, I've, I've, I've done a, a little bit of match racing here and there. I do think it helps a lot for team racing as well. So in terms of team raising skill in college, and it's very transferable. And it is really, it, it is one of those like super competitive divisions of sailing that's pretty, pretty widely accessible post-college sailing too. Absolutely. I think, you know, team match racing definitely helps the team racing. It's really accessible because, you know, it's, you don't have to bring a boat. You don't right. have to have your own boat. You show up, you sail other people's boats. Right. You're not responsible really for them too much, when, you know, once the regatta's is over. So it's right. really, it, it's really easy to get yeah. a hold of. So long as you don't. Destroy boat. Yeah, that's that's usually <laughs> advised, uh, you know, ill-advised. Yeah. But. Yeah. So so back to racing, we got, you know, same thing that's happening again. The left looks really strong. Uh, boat four looks like they're pretty pretty solid in there in the one. And then we got boat twelve. Tufts, looking has, having a really good race so far. All right. Um, Ken Legler must be proud. He is finally. Uh, this is his it. This is it. This is his final national championship. He coaches as a college college sailing coach, as the Tufts head sailing coach. So he must be feeling pretty electric going into these last two days. And you know, go go Kenny, go yeah. Kenny, go Kenny. <laughs> it's always nice when you see your boat out in front too, huh? Right. Yeah, yeah that's so true. <laughs> um, yeah, what a great shot. Yeah, the left, the left just kind of seems to be paying. The, the, let's take a look. So. We've got a nice view of boat two here. That's the Boston College Eagles. Um, so uh, the crews are on the rail. They're not hiking, but mm. they're relatively on the rail. Uh, you see Harvard there passing in boat eight. Crew was sitting in. Most crews are sitting in here, um, but it's it's light out there. So, but yeah. the good news is is they're on race three B. So from this point on, if the breeze does die today hypothetically speaking and the breeze dies tomorrow after these three races have been completed technically we have a national championship yep which is something that i think was a big stress factor kind of going into today is like is this breeze ever going to show up and will we be able to have a national championship yeah so on that note of like breeze if there's no breeze tomorrow let's say we get six races off today there's a really good chance that after these six races, you, you have your national champion. So how, like, these races are so, so important. You have to sail every single one of them, like, like you're like you're fighting to the death after, like, 16 races yep. to get that crown. Yep, you do, and I think, but the, a really key part in that and, and achieving, you know, good six races is you've got to have a short-term memory, whether you won the last mm. race, 
that prior or got dead last, you've got to have a short-term memory, brush it off, and go right back to work at building up a new race. Because with if, you know, if we are only able to get six races, that means you have six races to determine who's the best sail college sailing team in the country. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And that's a lot of pressure to weigh on skippers and crew's shoulders out there. And All so right. Oh, for sure. Being able yeah. to be clinical about that is, is a big factor. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be a long, 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 long day of racing today. Um, and, and that long day may just be six races in each division. Something interesting that we're seeing, and this is, of course, we talked about it. This is because of the current. Oftentimes, you don't want to be jibing around the offset, right? But but the current is so strong, like so strong that you, you have to essentially sacrifice a little bit of bad wind to get out to the deeper water and get into that stronger current. So you're seeing almost every single boat just in routine, just jibing, jibing out as soon as they can. Yeah, and it's because the the current is coming in from the New York City and that bridge there, the Throgs Neck Bridge, and coming across the course from left to right. And it actually, mm. every almost the entire downwind is being sailed on port because they're aiming above the marks and just sailing fast, knowing that the current's going to push them down to their mark. They're not, none of these boats are actually even aiming at the gates. They're probably 10, 20 degrees high, but getting pushed there by the time they get to the end of the run. Right. Absolutely. Very well said. Very well said. Yeah, so you, you know, you sail for Georgetown. Your team has been doing very, very good throughout the fleet racing. Uh, what's the Hoya's secret? Uh, there is no secret. Um, we just have a really good group of people. Uh, really, you know, we, we do have I think we have 27 people here on the roster this weekend, wow. so we probably have the biggest team. But the biggest thing is I think there is no secret. We just worked really hard in practice, and we've got everyone that's here doing everything they can to support our sailors out on the water, feed information. We've got group chats, you know, people right. looking at different factors of the race course, wow. um, trying to gather information. So there is no secret. None of these teams have a secret weapon or magic bullet. It's just about going out there and executing better than the other teams. I don't know. I think some, some of these – teams have some secret sauce no i'm just kidding <laughs> but uh yeah no i think you know the hoys have been doing an excellent job staying consistent i'd say that you guys have been nailing the consistency key and the consistency factor that is required to to place highly at a national championship so yeah. um and yeah i was uh, stunned i've heard that your team has had 39 people here at one over point the, yep. at one point Yep, we. I mean, we have 51 people on the roster, so 39 is actually kind of a weak showing for us. We're a little, you know, disappointed with that. We'd like to get those numbers yes. up in the future. One would say those are rookie numbers, but wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, mean, you're cheering and cheering from the shoreline is not rookie. Yeah, you guys that, are. That's that's the A-level team down there. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we we can hear it on the live streams when we watch back the yeah. day before here it picking up through the mics but the cowbells mm -hmm. it's lovely no you guys are definitely quite you guys are good cheerleaders for your teammates we're very energetic yeah oh oh yeah i've definitely learned that that's quite lovely but uh but yeah we're we're lucky to have you on so thanks for oh, thanks, thanks for joining us thank you for having me i think it's it's a great way to spend the day up here. It's a nice view from the commentary box, and it's some great racing we get to watch. Yeah, and why don't you why don't you remind the viewers what remind the viewers your name? Because I, I didn't know if you introduced yourself formally, but yeah. give give me your your name, your year, where are you from, who do you want to say thank you to? Yeah, um, my name is Jeffrey Peterson. I'm from Southern California. I'm part of the. I go to Georgetown. I'm class of 25. I'm a sophomore. Um, you know, someone I want to say thank you to, mom and dad, if you're Love out that. there watching. And uh, to all my teammates down there as well, and anyone watching that's a Hoya fan, and all the fans out there, thanks for watching. And we're going to keep trying to do the best job we can at putting you know, good races on the board for everyone. And I know all the teams are here to do the same thing. So we're just really grateful to be here. Awesome. Jeffrey, that was so well said. So <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. And uh, yeah, thank you. you know, we appreciate having you yeah. on with us. Thank you. Awesome. Cheers, man. All right. Charlotte, tell me. Tell me how how uh, much your retinas are burning right now. Yeah, this this glare is pretty pretty brutal, to say the least. And to even you know watch, it's kind of hard to see. You know, we're looking at monitors here, but to see from the land, you know, the numbers and um, to see all the sailors, you know, sailing and. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty brutal. I think I'm getting a little sunburn here. I need to, you know, reapply my dermatone. <laughs> oh. oh, but you must. Oh, but you must. But these downwinds are incredibly fast, and but so well, these races are timing out perfectly. So now with race 3D being done, we now know for certain 
by the end of tomorrow, we will have crowned a national champion. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, three. If if we don't get any, you know, obviously we're going to try to get more races. But to consider three races for a national championship, that's pretty, pretty insane. Right. So let me go, just give me one moment, folks. I'm going to pull up our current standings. I'm not sure that uh, this race has been entered just yet, but just stay tuned. Look at these incredibly, like th the thing is, is very tough spot for a PRO to be in, um, to know that you're gonna have no breeze the next day. And uh, like, right, this is all hypothetical. Ever, we've seen it on a few days where the, yesterday there was supposed to be no breeze and we had beautiful breeze. Yeah. So um, the thing is at the end of the day, the wind is unpredictable in my eyes yeah you know? and i think i think you know it it is pretty marginal and pretty light here right now but you know it's it's still saleable you know all, ev everyone's still moving you know we still see wing on wing right and not everyone you know you like saw the first race that was abandoned uh, a lot of people weren't able to sail wing on wing so um you know it's still still very much anybody's game it's still very much raceable so we'll see We'll see how everyone how everyone does. Charlotte, um, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Yeah. So just taking a look at some of these results so far. Um, and let me just confirm that our B has not been entered just yet. I'm just taking a look at these scores. Yeah, so B division has not yet been entered. So just give it a few mo moments. But right now I'm just looking at the top five teams. Um, and first we have Yale. In second, Dartmouth. In third, Stanford. In fourth, oh, look at that, beautiful. In first place right now, we have Yale Bulldogs with 16 points. Trailing by them, Dartmouth Big Green with 17 points. In third, the Stanford Cardinal with 30. So that's a little bit of a point gap there. Uh, the Harvard Crimson in fourth with 34 points. In fifth, we have Tulane with 36 points. In sixth, the Georgetown Hoyas with 40 points. In seventh, MIT Engineers with 42 points. In eighth, Coast Guard Bears with 46 points. In ninth, Fordham Rams with 48 points. So those are kind of those top players we want to be keeping our eyes on. Um, like we said, like Charlotte was saying, there's there's still some more racing that's going to happen. We're just saying that uh, if in in the case that it dies, you know, you gotta like every single point matters. Yeah, just like how Jeffrey was saying, like no. You just gotta gotta keep picking off boats and you know turn turn you know a 16 into a, a 14, a turn eight, 10 and 28. You know that's just so important, especially in this stuff and with no drop, which is still like I said, it's a completely different game than what I'm used to, especially like when I came into college sailing. You're totally right, and uh, we have the updated scores. That was in first Yale with 19 points, Dartmouth in second with 32 points. Stanford Cardinal in third place with 36 points. Harvard Crimson in fourth place with 45 points. Uh, taking a little bit of a digger in the B Division third race. In fifth place, Tulane Green Wave with 46 points. In sixth place, MIT Engineers with 47 points. In seventh, Georgetown Hoyas with 52 points. In eighth, Brown Bears with 53 points. In ninth, Coast Guard Bears with 55 points. And in tenth, St. Mary's Seahawks with 57 points. Not trailing too far behind. In 11th, Fordham Rams. 12th, U Miami. 13th, Pennsylvania Quakers. 14th, Tufts Jumbos. 15th, Rhode Island Rams. 16th, Boston College. 17th, Bowdoin. 18th, Navy Midshipmen. So we're taking a look at the pre-start. Pre that is one minute to go in race 4A. 420s. Yeah, it looks like there's a bit, if I'm not mistaken with this, <laughs> with this camera angle, looks like there's a lot of line sag. You see one here double tacking to, you know, kind of level themselves up on the line. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm hearing a, a little bit of uh, commentary of who, who, of who may be over. But right now, I don't even need the commentary. It looks like one is over. What do you think, Charlotte? Yeah, I think an eight, eight and four. four. Mm. One, yeah. yeah that, uh, I mean, one looks pretty fragrantly, fragrantly over. Flagrant? I don't know what fragrantly. 
I think that's what we're gonna say. He smells over. Maybe a general recall here, folks, because it looks like a lot. Look at how look at how beautifully in sync that is. I was. Yep, I, general recall. I'm a wizard. <laughs> nice. You're a witch. You. you. <laughs> We do know what that means. Charlotte, do you want to walk everyone through what the I flag is? Yeah, so uh, in racing, we get we get different flags to, you know, um, tell us what rule is in place. So, you know, you, in college sailing, we usually get two flags. So um, a prep, like, we get a class, usually we get a class flag, which obviously you don't really need to have it here. I guess if you had a 420 flag, you put a 420 flag or an A flag for A division up. And then um, at, actually, wait, I'm completely wrong with <laughs> the college sailing format. Uh, I think th they'll announce if it's an I flag or a P flag. So yep. P flag is a preparatory flag, which means there's no really rules. Mm. Um, if you're over, you have to go sail back through the middle, like any part of the line mm -hmm. and then restart. Um, and then if, you know, if you get a general, right, um, race committee can decide either to keep the preparatory flag or to go into an I flag. Mm. So an I flag is a yellow flag with a black dot in the middle. Mm. And the rule is if you are over on the line, you have to go round and end fr like from the outside in. Mm. So if you're in the middle of the line and you're <laughs> over, that is a long distance to go to either side. Yeah. Um, to restart yourself. Sorry, I was complete. I no, no, I got no. a little. You've, you're in the, uh, the the you know you're doing the Olympic circuit. You're in that uh, Olympic circuit mentality. You're seeing all kinds of flags I probably have never seen. So yeah, and a completely different uh, starting sequence as well. So for some reason I, th I <laughs> thought something else. <laughs> you're like you're like it's been uh, it's been a while. It's been a year since uh, yeah I've been sailing in college. So yeah. I'm like oh hey <laughs> it, I, hey there was a point in time Char Charlie thought. That in fleet racing it was two boat length circle, so yeah, I and think that's and the case. Yeah, it's the the for fleet racing it's the three boat length circle, team racing two. Yeah, yeah, and so t Charlie and I were like, neither one of us remember really well. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Just shouting around. So, um, but I am hearing word, we get to have an interview with the man, the myth, the legend, Ken Legler from Tufts University, head coach who was who is now retiring. Uh, so Ken Legler, uh, when we have the chance and, and you can hear me, I would love to talk to you about how thrilling it is that, you know, this is it, this is your final regatta. Hi, Ken, how are you doing? This is Gloria. Uh, hi, Gloria. Hi, Ken. Uh, so as we all know, you know, this is your final college sailing regatta as the he head coach of Tufts University. How are you feeling? Well, um, doesn't feel any different than the other regattas. Yeah, that's totally fair. Are you excited for your team? And, you know, what what's your plan for, uh, for after your retirement? Uh, I'll, I'll work less often. <laughs> I like that. From uh, you're a very busy man, if if I recall correctly, when we were just chatting it up the other day. Yeah, I'm tired of working seven days a week. <laughs> uh, I'd like to work about four or five instead. Oh man, still four and five. Ken Legler does not take a break. Ken, tell me, what is your most fondest college sailing memory as a coach? Uh, probably winning uh, women's nationals. Incredible. Yeah, that's it, you. You have won many national titles as a coach, so um, you know it's it's really sad to see you leaving college sailing. But uh, as always, nobody can forget you. You you are a, the man, the myth, the legend, as I like to call it. Well, thanks. Um, I, I'm really happy for the team that we're here. Right. Exactly. We're qualified. Right. You guys are doing a pretty great job. You guys just had a great race. What are you seeing out there on the water, and what's kind of been working? Well, uh, the first race, going left didn't work. There was just as much current on the left as there was on the right. And the breeze had already shifted left. So if they had started that race 20 minutes earlier, that would have worked. Right. Uh, however, th th there's a possibility that going left will work again as the current changes. It might die there first. Yep, and for any of those viewers that are watching from home, uh, do you have any, anything you want to say? 
Well, I'm not sure who's listening, but uh, the weather out here on the water is wonderful. Amazing. Well, Ken, thank you so much. Um, like I said, we appreciate everything you've done, and uh, you're, all, you're always a legend, and uh, college sailing will truly miss you. Well, you'll see me again. In fact, I probably will be running some college regattas. Incredible. So good. We'll see you around, but uh, I'm sure that Tufts in particular will be missing you. All right. Well, Gloria, keep up the good work, and thanks for having me. Thanks so much, Ken. Good luck out there. There you go. You folks heard it. There was Ken Legler, always in his binos and uh, always having something good to say. So Ken is, like I said, an incredible, incredible part of college sailing and and has been such a legend and at Tufts University. And truly, everybody knows him and, and certainly will miss him. Uh, on the shorelines or out on the boats when he's co when he was coaching yeah. Tufts and yeah and I think he also used to work here as well that is right yeah 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 I think he started his college coaching career at Kings uh, at Kings Point oh yeah yeah how, how did he say how long he's been he's been doing coaching for I think he or no. just been in college sailing like, oh man I think since he graduated college wow and yeah. then how many years with Tufts I want to say he's been with Tufts for over 40 years. Wow, that is incredible. Yeah, he's he's truly a great guy. Um, so, yeah, what a legend. What mm. a legend. Well, Charlotte, what are you seeing out there? Well, it kind of seems like the same thing as, you know, viewers have seen the past couple of races. You know, the left looks really strong. Um, we can see boat 14 here, um, Coast Guard, um, A Division. You know, cruising, cruising from the left, looking pretty strong. Next to, if I'm not, um, boat five, Georgetown, looking really good from the left as well. And then boat four, tacking back onto onto port. That's uh, that's the Brown Bears. So uh, kind of the same patterns as we yeah. saw the last couple races, but um, you know, we could get someone from from the right, like last race with Bowden. Yeah, so. Totally. Uh, so yeah, but now as we as we pan to to B divisions, uh, start you know it looks it looks a little bit more, uh, more spread out evenly across the line. There's um, you can see Dartmouth, Dartmouth boat three, Maddie Hawkins and Ashling Sullivan, definitely a strong pair not to be reckoned with. Um, I like it. They're always wearing their short sleeve T-shirts. I swear, even in the uh, the windiest of conditions. So they're truly a pair to be reckoned with on the water. They're fast. They're wicked, wicked fast. And you know, I was we were talking about siblings in college sailing, and how could I have forgotten? Uh, Boyd Bragg on Dartmouth also has his younger sister. That was two and thirteen that were over. Two Boston College, thirteen Navy, but how could I have possibly forgotten? Boyd Bragg has his younger sister, Reese Bragg. She's a crew at Dartmouth, so those two also notoriously very fast, both Christchurch uh, High School graduates, and so they even won a Baker Championship together, which is, if those of you that are listening don't know it, that's the high school team race national championship. So definitely, I love all the siblings in college. I love it. I'm going to yeah. try and think about some more. Who else we got? Huh. Yeah, we got a lot of siblings. Right? That, like, I'm, I'm forgetting. I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I was like, I even for, forgot about Boyd and Reese. And there's the Coles twins. Mm -hmm, the O'Brien twins. The O'Brien's twins. Um. The Callahan twins. Lots of twins. The yeah. Byrne twins. The Byrne twins that went to Harvard. Yeah. yeah and, then and then their younger sister she goes to Harvard now. I'm pretty sure the Byrne twins just graduated. Am I wrong? No, the Bur they're still there. Oh, they're still there. Okay. Or they just competed at women's. I think, I don't know. I'm not sure they have graduated. Who else? There's so many. Yeah. The, uh, the McCann twins that I grew up with in Houston. Yeah, Marshall go. McCann goes to University of Miami, and his twin brother just graduated from Georgetown. There you go. That's another one. Yeah, a lot of siblings. So many siblings. It's wild. Look at that. I love that. I truly love that. Yeah. It's good stuff. It's wholesome. Keep it in the family. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Super wholesome. <laughs> All right, guys. Looking at this race, it's definitely starting to lighten up. What do you think? Yeah, a lot. A, a little, yeah. 
I think so. Like I, I'm, I'm, and I just want to know. Like you watch these upwinds, right? And wh- when you see a boat, oh well, look at boat eight, Harvard, just right on Brown and boat four. Yeah, I had on a swivel, all of them, right. crews, skippers, try, just trying to look for the next pressure. I yeah. like where boat eight tacked there, yeah. because they're not they're not necessarily banging the left left side, but they're, they're consolidating yes. the fleet. Yes. You know, cr- cross when you can, like my <laughs> like John. Mm. <laughs> what I learned at JU is cross when you can. Right. Yeah, and just taking a quick look, I just want to see our. Um, just want to give you know a shout. Let's see, uh, in B division leading right now. Actually, we were talking about it. The Cold Twins uh, leading B division right now is Yale Bulldogs. Carmen, Ka- I'm sorry, Carmen Coles, class 25, and Anisha Arcot 23. And second in B division right now is Liam O'Keefe from Brown and Nora Ong. Um, then and he's a freshman. He's a freshman, class of 26. Wow. That's pretty good. That's pretty that good. That is impressive. Right? Then in third in B division right now is uh, U.S. Coast Guard Academy, Coleman Schofield and Laura O'Neill. And then, like I was saying, there's there's two. Yeah, there's, you know, I can't help but notice how many women are sailing in the B division, or skippering, rather, in the B division that are doing absolutely phenomenally. So, you know, you've got Yale's Carmen, a, a woman skipper at the open uh, open uh, fleet race. She's leading the division. Then in four, tied for fourth, you have Dartmouth College's Big Green, Maddie Hawkins, and Ashling Sullivan with 19 points. Tied with yet another woman's driver, uh, Vanessa Larkamp, also a freshman, by the way, with the uh, lovely senior Abigail Tyndall, class 23. In sixth place, MIT engineers Dana Haig, yet another woman's driver, class of 22. She's a senior. She's graduating. And wait for it. I'm not even done. In seventh, Ciara rodriguez Horan, 22 from Tulane. Wow, that is a very good showing. Two, three, four, five. Out of the top seven right now in B division, five are women's drivers. That's very impressive. We're talking like beyond them being women leading in the open fleet race. These are also women that have been sailing. This is their 10th day of sailing. Yeah. yeah. Some of them. Some of them. Not all, but most. It's their 10th day of sailing. They've sailed. They've been at these events for very long now. So... I can't help but give them a shout. And also, I can't forget, m- mustn't forget, we also have in this B division, Colleen O'Brien from Boston College also skipping. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it definitely is. It, it's great to see that, you know, there's more, you know, they've, they've been here for 10 days now, but to just see that more representation, like female skippers here out at um, the, open, uh, the open fleet racing. Um but uh, yeah, and Charlotte, yeah. you and you and I both were women skippers uh, in college sailing, and and we both kind of were talking about that on our on our lovely drive uh, to the venue this morning, about how when we were when there was a nationals Annapolis nationals, right? Yeah, yeah. When we were yeah. both driving, we were some of the only fe- there was like maybe five of us in total at the open fleet race and the open team race, and there were so so few of us. I mean. It's beautiful to see that there's so many women that are just rising to the occasion on every single year. And and beyond that, like, I mean, I wouldn't even say I was amazing. These women are amazing sailors, like yeah. so extremely talented. And I mean, to them, this is just another day. It's it's in- absolutely stunning how well they've been doing. Yeah, I have, I have immense respect for all of them, you know. Um yeah. You know, the endurance to be here for 10 days, to keep your head <sighs> on a swivel, to sail what I can't even count right now at the top of my head, how many races they've done. Right. Like, try to get 10, 12 races in a day. You know, that's that's pretty it's pretty brutal oh, mentally yeah. and physically. Oh. So, like, and it's just great to see that, you know, more, you know, more female sailors out in the sport. Um, you know, when I, when I first came to JU, like, I was one of maybe – three or four women skippers on the team 
And you know, now that I've graduated, we got a, you know we got a handful more uh, skippers that are female, and um, it's just great to see. Yeah, and I'm um, even you know taking a look in, in A division. Without doubt, must must give him a shout out. We have Michelle Larkamp sailing for Stanford University. She's a senior, has had such a strong showing. There you go. You got the Hoyas over to my left. I love that. I love that team support. And then you also have Michaela O'Brien from, from Boston College as well. So, I mean, these women are just paving, like they're they're making the pathways for other women in sailing by by doing so beautifully on the water and and doing so excellently and talently. There's extremely talented, incredible sailors, and it's so beautiful what they're doing in my eyes. Um, so, yeah, I, love to I see could it. talk about this all day. I could talk about it all I day, too. I could talk about this all day, my goodness. I just, I'm, I can, I can, I can, oh, man. I'm just so impressed and so, so incredibly proud of these women because it's not easy. No. Sailing is not easy, and they are so talented and, yeah. I mean, all uh, you know, and we'll we'll get into more detail of, of the other sailors as well, folks. Uh, just stay tuned with me. We're just going to take a, a really quick break here. There you go. There's the Georgetown Hoya. Absolutely rejoicing here. That's so awesome. Team spirit there. <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. I, uh, there's nothing better than having, like, a supportive group teammates. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. That makes such a difference. I mean, to, if there's any kind of, you know, beef or drama between teams, you, you, can, you can feel it and see 43rd. it. You oh, can yeah. Right? Can we come back? I feel like you can uh, see it every time they walk July off the water. 23rd. And uh, it just makes yeah. all the difference, I think, in people's performance. Yeah. It's really great to see that, you know, the Georgetown Hoyas, there's so many of them here. And their team is just so large and how supportive they all are with each other. It's just it's just great yeah. to see. And you, oh, you know, and, and right now their uh, so A skipper um, is currently yep. winning the race. Um, um, as you can see here in boat five. Yeah, boat five. They're uh, kind of leveraged out on that boat four. Oh, there you can see them in the background on the downwind. But even on this uh, race of 4B, you can see that they're kind of leveraged a little bit above boat four. I'm curious how that cross is going to come out. But this could be a really good set for the Georgetown Hoyas is exactly yeah. what any, any team should be looking for is just consistency amongst their A and B division skippers or and crews. Yeah, it looks like on this uh, B division Ooh. upwind, the, the right looks like looks pretty, pretty strong right now. Majority of people are on starboard tack. Um, boat four coming back across from the left. I'm pretty sure they're just under ley line. So uh, um, boat four is uh, brown, um, brown bears. And they've got a pretty good lead, Charlotte. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I, f I think they, it's pretty strong right now. You know, 12 is probably a couple boat lengths behind. But, you know, to, to be able to have a pretty comfortable spot might feel really good to them. Yeah, you know? right. And then just trailing behind is the Tufts Jumbos. So, you know, Ken, Ken must have said something real good to them because they're having another good race here. They're definitely not a team to be counted out here. But yeah, Charlotte, you're absolutely right. The right is uh, 
it's kind of starting to pay off a little bit more and more. That's what we're starting to kind of see. Yeah. At um, least definitely the, I mean, top left, but people are coming out of the middle right. Not too bad. Yeah, and, and in uh, fourth place, we got a um, little shout out here. Liam O'Keefe, class of 26, and Nora Ong, class of class of 23 looking really strong in first place coming around the last uh last up win mark and then we got boat um boat 12 um it's a tough's jumbos tough's jumbos uh ben mueller class of 26 he's a laser sailor as well oh um and uh it's like harvard Hen henry tyndall 25 oh. Oh. then uh, behind them is harvard and boat eight who's who's that charlotte We got Justin Callahan, 26, and Kennedy Lehealy. 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 I think. I think. I'm not too positive, yeah, but that's how I've been pronouncing it. Class of 26. Okay, here we go. We got boat 17 as well. That's going to be Yale Bulldogs. Carmen Coles and uh, boat nine. Anisha Arcot. There we, there we hear again the Georgia, uh, Georgetown Hoyas. Um, their A division skipper just finished in first. So, uh, And really quickly, you want to use College Sailing 20 uh, for 20% off on uh, Dermatone.com. You heard it here. Charlotte and I have been using it nonstop in this booth as we have this beautiful sun starting to set. But seriously, it's as easy as going to Dermatone.com and use the code College Sailing 20 for 20% off. There we go, and I like how the umpires are always on high alert, ready to make sure nobody's going to foul, no pumping, none of that. None no. of that's jazz. Oh, it's, a, it's really, we're starting to see, now that's a little bit of a hot take here. This boat, is that 13 or 3? They're just going straight to a wing. They're not, uh, they're not jiving over that reach as we've been seeing, so almost makes me think, is this current starting to kind of, is the current starting to die down a little bit? Yeah, that's what Ken was saying, didn't he? Um, Ken was saying that um, towards the shore it's supposed to slack a little bit and then switch, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. But we have... Um, we have an amazing interview with, with the man, the, uh, the, <laughs> the, the man also himself. the man, the, myth, the legend. <laughs> yeah, but the man bit with the plan that has put the helped put this entire event together, uh, Brendan Feeney, uh, coach at Kings Point. Brendan, do you want to tell me a little bit about what's going on on the water? Yeah, Gloria and Charlotte, thanks for having me. Um, so we're looking at this 4B race. You guys were spot on about the current. It's still uh, pretty strong. Uh, it's coming, uh, you know, downwind, so to speak. Uh, so you see a lot of boats working on the left side. Boats four and 12, I believe that's Brown and Tufts. Uh, took the right-hand turn looking down, wind, and uh, worked the left side there. Amazing. Yeah, so, you know, some of these guys uh, have been starting to stop jibing around the top mark which was kind of making us think, is the current starting starting to die down on us as well, though? Yeah, so a good way to figure that out is uh, taking a look at the tide chart. Um, I believe the tide is, is coming up. It will take about an hour and a half before you start feeling the current switch with the tide. Um, so that's a pretty good indicator, um, as well as the end of the seawall. So when the sailors start coming in and out, they can get a pretty good look uh, at the end of the seawall to be able to see which way the current's going. Amazing. And Brendan, uh, tell me a little bit of a, give me a fun fact about this venue or about uh, something on the water. Cause you know, this is, this is your turf, this is your land. And what's something you want everybody to know? Yeah, so it's a great place to sail. Uh, Charlie Lomax mentioned it, uh, alumni here, 28 tier. Um, you know, it gets all the conditions. You get a sea breeze that, you know, comes you know every day. You get nor'easterlies that are really, you know, good breeze, uh, provide great waves, really big open water. So you get a lot of different conditions. You get great views, you know, looking at the Throg's Neck with this B Division fleet and, um, you know, great city skyline. So it's a great place uh, to sail. New York driving, though. Too many uh, horns and a lot of traffic, so I can do without that. 
But uh, yeah, it's a great place. Amazing, Brendan. Well, we're so grateful and for everything that you've done to help put this event together. And I hope you have a lovely rest of the day on the water. Um, folks, hold on your seats because I think we're gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna, we're, we're, we might be starting a, actually, we're gonna hold on. We're just gonna call out these final races here. Look at that, UPenn, I'm sorry, Pennsylvania Quakers. Um, Finishing 15 13. That was, I think, 6 2, 14 7 16. So definitely Pennsylvania Quakers next to Tulane, next to Coast Guard, next to MIT with Fordham, Boston College, and boat 16, uh, U Miami. So. I believe they're gonna come and do a quick break on shore, folks. That way they can do some rotations. Um, uh, but we're just gonna take a really quick break and we'll be right back. Zim and West Coast Sailing are proud to support ICSA with the College Sailing Give Back Program. When college programs make purchases through their Zim and West Coast Sailing Team accounts, they not only get great equipment, great service, and great discounts, but also 5% of their purchase is donated back to ICSA. With the Zim and West Coast Sailing College Give Back Program, your general fleet maintenance and sale purchases help with general maintenance of ICSA and provides direct support to the organization that makes it all happen and increases access to the water for all. Oh, wow. Oh. Look at this close-up. Oh, there you go. No, you can bring that back. I want to show everybody what my white my white pantsuit I've got rocking uh, today, this fine evening. Um, folks, welcome to the West Coast Sailing post-game show. Hello, welcome back. So folks, uh, everybody's kind of coming ashore right now. They're gonna do a quick rotation. You know, race committee has been out there since I think about 10 a.m. So they're gonna take a quick break. Um, and so we're gonna just walk you through. What have we seen today? Uh, good news is we've gotten four races off in each division, which is enough to constitute a national championship. Now, why do we say that? Because uh, what does the forecast show tomorrow, Charlotte? Looking pretty poor. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, forecast tomorrow doesn't look very strong. Uh, I, I, I don't think I've looked at it personally, but a lot of people have said that not much breeze like we saw this morning. It was a lot of waiting this morning to get a little bit of sea breeze. I think um, they tried. They sent. They tried to send the fleet out once, and then was like, "Oh, never mind. The wind shut off and sent them back in." And then waited another. I don't know. Thirty minutes to an hour and then sent them out uh, into a little, you know, dying northerly, um, you know, tried to get, I think they got like half of uh, a division's race off mm -hmm. and then, you know, cut it um, because there was a lack of breeze. And then, you know, within a 30 minute time span, you know, we got the wind to clock all the way to the south breeze and, you know, bring us about, I'd say six to maybe eight knots of breeze, yeah. um, you know good enough to sail i'd exactly. say so um yeah yeah and we saw some pretty tight racing out there i mean one thing that was w biggest takeaway from today i think was current what do you think yeah for sure i um, think yeah i think the current was just like so strong we were seeing a lot of the same patterns in the races right yeah absolutely and i think I think just on, you know, geographically as well, where we are, we're, we're pretty, like the race course, they moved it out a little bit further, but to begin with, they, they kept the course pretty close to, to the break wall. And uh, um, I think as I'm looking out onto the bay, you know, the bay mm. kind of shifts kind of towards the left. So I think, you know, geographically, it's going to bring down a little bit more breeze mm. um, and shift a little bit left, in my opinion. So if I was out there racing today, I'd probably say, mm, a little bit more current relief on the left. Mm. Looks like there's more breeze on the left. 
I'm going to go left. So uh, I think for a lot of sailors today, I, I think they had that same mindset. Uh, what did you say? Left is a... Uh, left is law. Left is law. Left so, is uh, law. <laughs> And I just like to throw up the L sign to myself, and I'm like, left is law. <laughs> Except that's not always the case. I feel like I oftentimes we get carried away with that. You know what I mean? And then it's like the wind would shift, and I was like, no, 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 left is law, left <laughs> is law. And they're like, yeah. why are you banging the left? And I'm like, it's law. Yeah, so <laughs> let's let's head to uh, one of the races today. Bowden came from the right. Let's let's hear from them, a little interview today. So how did it go today? How What, what did you see on the water coming from, from the boat? Uh, we had a pretty tough first set. Um, we, partially our own fault, we had to bail at the mark. Uh, didn't have great starts. But it seemed like in the first two races, you could kind of make the right work. But then the second two, uh, it was pretty much a race to the left. And then the left was going to come out on top. Yeah, so... Uh I feel like, you know, some people came out from the from the right, but majority came came out from the left. So, uh what what are your thoughts for, you know, if we go out this next set, uh what, what are your plans for for your, you know, getting off the start line and, you know, telling your teammates what what we want to do? Yeah, I think we're going to try to get off near the pin, um go to the left. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen with the current cuz it's going to be switching pretty soon. Uh, but I think we're going to stick with that plan, and if we see anything different, maybe change it up. Yeah, awesome. And really quick, right before you leave, remind us your name uh, and your lovely crew's name as well. Uh, my name is Chris, and I'm sailing with Izzy. Amazing. Well, best of luck to you guys for the rest of this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, so that's really interesting. I mean, I, I've got to take a look at a chart. A bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, chart. There. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> a tide chart myself. Um, I can't remember what. I thought I had seen it for like 740 tide change. But hey, don't listen to me. Yeah, I think it was 740. Maybe 8. But you can't listen to me on tides. Maybe yeah. I can predict uh, the, what the wind's doing every now and then. Yeah, I think what's a good a good indicator is you know um, if you don't have a tide chart, right? You're right. not gonna out, you're not out there with tide mm. charts and whatever. Right. Um, <laughs> you're not on big boats. You're on small little dinghies. Yeah, right. I think looking at you know like if you're at the start line looking at the pin, you know, kind mm. of seeing um, you know visual signals. So you kind of if it's Ripping down, you see kind of like swirls coming out mm -hmm. of the, the leeward side of uh, the pin mark, or you can even see which way the race committee is facing. So like if later, right, the tide's going to go out, meaning yeah. that the, the current's going to be moving upwind. So right. moving with the boats going upwind, um, you can kind of get an indicator that, you know, if the race committee starts turning around, so yes. if they're getting dragged and they're facing downwind, that's kind of an indicator that the... the uh, that's that's the always a the, the current has changed. Yeah, no, that's always a, a really good one. And Charlotte, I just got word we have lovely updated scores uh, from what's going on so far. So let's go ahead and take a look. So these are the overall sco scores, folks. So as you can see, stellar job by Yale Bulldogs with 27 points. Talk about s single digits. The, oh, the, yeah. They haven't put up a race that's bigger than five. I'm like, how? I can't yeah, do that. That's Jeez, very that's impressive. Incredibly well done. So, and 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 their B division, a one, two, three, three. Ugh. Go off, Queen. Okay, go, go off, off queen. queen. Because that is so impressive. After four races, only putting on nine points. That is so well done by the Yale Bulldogs right now. Uh, in second, Stanford Cardinal, uh, the all women's team uh, right now. So in A division, uh, we see they have 20 points. B division, 23 points, having a total of 43 points. Um, then in third, we have the Dartmouth Big Green uh a division with 21 points, B division with 29. They have overall 50 points. Trailing right behind third is in fourth, Harvard Crimson with 55 points. In fifth, the Georgetown Hoyas. No wonder why they're celebrating so much. Yeah. Uh, they've got 58 points. In sixth, the Brown Bears with 60 points. It looks like their B division is having a very strong event so far with 12 points. Wow. Um, a division looks like uh, these are tough conditions, folks, and we know how tight these these fleets are. So, um, 
B division is really, you know, sometimes you'll see these teams put in their strongest players in B division and are just like, go win it. Go win it. And then A division just kind of hangs in. Um, in seventh place, Tulane Green Wave with 70 points. In eighth, Coast Guard Bears with 73 points. In ninth, MIT Engineers with 78 points. In 10th, the St. Mary Seahawks with 82 points. In 11th, the Pennsylvania Quakers with 87 points. In 12th place, Fordham Rams with 88 points. In 13th, the Rhode Island Rams. I swear I see these Rams just right next to one another just duking it out every time. With uh, Rhode Island Rams with 93 points. In 14th, the Tufts Jumbos with 94 points. In 15th, U Miami Hurricanes with 95 points. In 16th, the Bowdoin Polar Bears with 96 points. In 17th, the Boston College Eagles with 107 points. And in 18th, the Navy Midshipmen with 112 points. Folks, they had four races in each division. They're going to go out there after this rotation. They're going to go get as many more done as possible as you can see everybody's just taking a quick breather you know quick bathroom break all the rotations have been on the water so everybody needs tinkle time okay i'm an avid fan so um yeah. speaking of you know what we were saying about with brown b division got has 12 points killing killing the game right now um on the dock we have uh liam o'keefe who is the um skipper right now for b division uh is, is liam there so it turns out he's not just oh. quite ready, but I'm excited to hear what he's got to say. If I recall correctly, isn't he a freshman? Yeah, or I a think first he year? Is. Sorry, yeah, I first think. year. Yeah, some people. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and he's ready. There we go. Yeah. Hi, Liam. Hello, Liam. Can you hear us? Yeah, he will. There we go. Hello, Liam. One second. It looks like. Uh, we're just having a little bit of a hard time just hearing Liam. Once we get that, uh, perhaps we will get that interview. Um, but yeah, what like well, look at the sun setting? How beautiful is this venue, Charlotte? Yeah, it's 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 beautiful. You know, we're facing west. You know, we got a little view of New York City. You can see the I'm not wrong, the Empire State Building, mm -hmm. right? Um, great views. Nice nice bridge. I don't know what the name of the bridge is, but. Um, it's really nice out and a lot of open water, some nice breeze. And you can see there, <laughs> Gloria has her white blazer on. She's looking show great. I my nice suit today. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, she's looking good. Yeah, we're I'm, looking, we're looking. Uh, yeah, I think we're looking pretty sharp good. today. Look at us in, in our white. Yeah, there we go. Yep. Yep. I'm just going to. I'm just going to. So <laughs> she's got her white can, pants on. So the camera can see me. There we go. Yep. <laughs> yep. Just take a look there. Yep. There we go. And I heard Liam's ready. <laughs> Yeah. So, Liam, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Amazing. Hi. Liam, you're a freshman at Brown, am I correct? Yes. Nice. So, uh, you're having a really great day today. You're a freshman out there. Uh, tell me about what's been working for you today. Um, yeah, we've just been trying to get off the line. Um, I mean, we, we kind of played the left side on, on our, both our bullets, so... That was working well. We were getting a little lefty off the land, and just like trying to stay calm and clear air, go fast, basically, not overthink anything. Amazing, Charlotte. Do you do you want to ask Liam something? Yeah, it sounds really great. Um, you know, like we we get a little break now, and we're gonna go out for you know la could possibly be the last set. You know, what 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 are your thoughts? What are you feeling? You know, you just won both both uh, races both of the last races uh wh what are your thoughts what are you what are you feeling mentally going into this this these last two races um i mean i'm trying to just keep it simple and not overthink anything i was um just trying to keep the lead keep um yeah top fives and yeah not overthink anything not get any double digits don't be over uh i mean it's pretty early in the regatta we have another day and so yeah Thanks. Nice. Liam, uh, one of my favorite things is uh, to ask is, you know, out of all of your coaching that you've ever received or anything, a lot of coaches give you a, a really catchy phrase to remember, uh, like a good, good uh, piece of advice in sailing, right? So one of mine had kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Uh, and you just said, keep it simple. Do you have any fun mottos like that that uh, any coaches have taught you over the years that you think is quite good wisdom? 
I mean, yeah, I was going to say keep it simple, stupid. Love it. Also, so, yeah, that's what I've been thinking, the whole regatta. And just, I don't know, my, I like my coach, Danny, says just, just, just listen to me and, and you'll do well. Amazing. <laughs> well, Liam, thank you so much. Best of luck out there this afternoon. Seriously, keep crushing it. And uh, do you have anyone you want to thank out, uh, back home? Um, I yeah, I mean, my mom's here watching. I want to thank her and my parents back home. And then just my coaches and everyone who's helped me along the way. I Incredible. Mean, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Liam. I hope you have a great rest races, rest of your races, and uh, keep crushing it. Yeah, Go you're Bears. doing awesome. Thank you. Good luck. Awesome. So, Charlotte, what's your mentality? Let's put ourselves in these boats, right? We're, we're taking a quick breather, quick break on shore. We might be going out there for the very final set of nationals. It's one might be one day. You know, what's what's your mentality going out there? Yeah, just like how you said and Liam Liam said, uh, you know, I was taught kiss, keep it simple, stupid, and I know, um, yeah, I think the biggest thing for a lot of sailors is the start. You know, a lot of current, try to get off the start line, good speed, clear air. You know, that's all you could really ask for is. You know, keep keeping it simple, keeping it to the basics that you know, and uh, not overcomplicating the venue. You know, taking it for what it is. It's mm. we know from the past ten days, right? This venue is very difficult, and it's it's very easy to you know overcomplicate things when you don't necessarily need to. So, mm. I think just keeping a clear mind, level head, and you know, doing what you can with what you got. So right. uh, that's what I that's my mentality going into it. I like it. I would say that mine is, uh, mine's have fun. I think that's <laughs> always kind of my mentality. Is like I think that what I do to really help calm my nerves is I just I try to make other people laugh. Like other people laughing keeps me happy, and and I feel like keeps other people happy. And I like to just set a good vibe across the entire fleet. Like if I'm on the starting line, I'll be like, hey, good luck. You know, <laughs> like I'm, how many times would you see me on the starting line? I'm like, Charlotte. Hey. Yeah, you probably saw me that I needed to be in a better mood. <laughs> <laughs> well, I try, you know, I try to keep it nice and positive. But uh, so, yeah, I think that's what I would do. I would just probably be, you know, cracking jokes on shore, like cracking jokes the whole way out. And uh, that was kind of like my, yeah. my reset thing. It was just, let's just go out and have fun, you know? Yeah, being like a goldfish, I think. I was I think, a goldfish. Yeah, I think that's what, <laughs> yeah, like what you said. And then, like, having a good vibe with your crew. I think yeah. the biggest thing for me was, like, uh, like, I was a pr I'm, I am a pretty intense sailor, um, even in college sailing. And you know, the the best I did was when I had a crew that like knew like how to keep things simple, how to keep things fun, you know, keep it light and airy. And I I think that you know having a good crew and skipper relationship, because you know mm -hmm. you're gonna have some you're gonna have some pretty tough races out there. And if if you two are not able to get along and you know try to reset together and try to keep that communicate going it's just it's not gonna end well with with, oh. with the racing so true you know? so true i mean the crews are so important on the yeah. boat you know it, i feel like a, i feel like a lot of people really they really forget. don't forget forget about the crews we, we they do so much i know they don't give them enough appreciation yeah right i think i think crews are so crucial on these boats and it's like i just think about how my crews would always help me so much and just obviously everything aspect of the boat, like just boat handling and so on. And then also just like the whole mental aspect. Like yeah. I, was, I was telling somebody else is like, if I ever got stressed out, we're doing bad in a race. I'd be like, can, can you sing for me? They'd be like, <laughs> oh. and they would have to what sing song? a song for me. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. They'd be like, oh, which song are you hooked on right now? And I'm like, this one, please sing it. <laughs> like, And that would be like my reset. So it's like my poor crews, they... Not only had to be talented at boat handling, but they also had to be talented entertainers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <funny>. So, <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, uh, have you not been practicing your vocals? <laughs> Did you not warm your, vo your, your, your vocals up for this race? Didn't you know? <laughs> no, Were you not prepared? <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> so, but um, I think we may have another interview, but um, let me just get word on that for one second. Charlotte, tell us... Uh, Tell us a little bit more. So you're from Texas, for those of you that are, are watching, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, I'm, yeah, I'm from Houston, Texas. I get a lot of comments 
that say, oh, there's sailing in Texas? And it's like, yeah, well, I'm on the Gulf Coast. I'm on the Gulf Coast of Mexico. And so um, grew up on, well, lived an hour away from Galveston Bay. So there's about three yacht clubs that are around there. Um, definitely not as pretty as here. We got some brown water <laughs> in mm. Galveston Bay. Mm. Mm, yum. <laughs> um, mm. Yeah, I grew up there. Not much current at all, just a bay. Um, a lot of chop. Really, it's super hot in the summer, but really beautiful sea breeze. Um, and yeah, you, you get any condition year round yeah. there. And uh, yeah, I grew up out of Houston, Yonkel, learned how to sail there. Amazing. And then, uh, well, yeah. not to interrupt, but speaking of the South, I just got word that we have uh, Charles Higgins, head coach of Tulane University, our reigning champs uh, of last year of the Open Fleet Race National Championship. Uh, Charles Higgins, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you fine. Awesome. Charles, thanks so much for coming on. Um, uh, for starters, we got to talk about it. You coached at KP at one point, didn't you? Whew, uh, I think I left here about 15 years ago. Wow, incredible. So so you've got a little bit of insider knowledge on, on what's going on with the conditions here, don't you? I mean, maybe a little bit, but I think uh, this is one of the more common sailing venues we have in college sailing. Most of the coaches and a lot of the athletes have been here before. So, you know, unlike uh, maybe sailing in New Orleans, I think everyone kind of knows the plan. Yeah. And so, Charles, I know you guys had a, a really tight semifinals. You guys made it on uh, onto the finals and, you know, you guys are doing really well. Like, like I, I mean, I couldn't help, help but emphasize it enough. I was like, nobody sleep on Tulane. I, I have a strong, I've got my money on the fact that they're making it to the finals, as you guys did. Congratulations. Um, and now Thanks. you guys are having a very strong performance right now. So, you know, what's your team's mentality? What's your coach's mentality, especially being the winners of the championship last year? Yeah, I think last year we did a good job of taking it one race at a time. We didn't take... Uh, really any of it too seriously and we knew that it was always going to come down to the last race you know at this point after semifinals we know that that's uh that's done and dusted we can't get mm. any of it back and that's also good for us you know at the end of yesterday i felt like we were as poised as anybody coming in we knew that it would be a long day of waiting and now that uh, the breeze is in it's a brand new day and looking forward to getting it back out for the rest of the evening Amazing. And uh, Charles, you've done such an incredible job of building up the program as well at Tulane. So um, I also just want to say, you know, you have had to post such a big event last year. You did it. Um, what are some of the key aspects to to putting together an event like nationals? Uh, first and foremost, you have to have an incredible staff. Um, mm. I was really, really fortunate and still am to have such a great uh, assistant coach who really, really took the reins and being able to bring in a solid PRO and really the team being able to do everything, you know, getting getting everything from scores up right away, uh, cleaning out trash cans, you name it. You know, it's it, it's it's a big effort. Right. So, yeah, and we, we, we see it here today, right? So every year it's just so impressive as to what you guys are doing. And, and uh, Charles, uh, anything else you, you'd like to say for the viewers? No, you know, it's been an incredible experience. And KP's doing a great job. And hopefully this breeze holds and Kyle can get some races off and, have a great end of the evening. Amazing. Thank you so much, Charles. And uh, roll wave. <laughs> roll wave. <laughs> roll wave. Um, awesome. So you guys heard it. Uh, we're going to, they're going to go out there. They're going to try and get a few more races off. It looks like the breeze is holding quite nicely. Yeah, it looks like it's come up a, uh, just a little bit. So just, yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. But uh, as you guys know, it is actually 718 here on the East Coast here in New York, New York. Or I don't even know. It's we're technically Great Neck, New York, but <laughs> it is uh, seven eighteen here in New York, and uh, Charlotte and I really want to be well rested, and uh, you know, our voices stay nice and soft for tomorrow. <laughs> so, thank you for coming to the West Coast Sailing post race show. Yeah, thanks for having us.